Mike, take the ball. There, first sure you have the kick. Would you put your back over there, sir? Rutgers wins the toss. They elect to receive. Good game. Interesting, Lenny. I talked to Bicknell yesterday. I said, we've seen teams delay their choice. They win the coin, the coin toss. They'll say, we'll delay our option to the second half. Bicknell said, I don't delay anything. Anytime I win the toss, I want the ball. I want Flutie to have the ball. Well, I, on the other side, I don't think that they want Flutie to have the football. So Rutgers winning the toss. They said, hey, let's try to get on the board first before he gets out on the field. John Sophie is the uh, referee today. Ronald Abdow is the umpire. Donald uh, Gooman is the head linesman. Joseph Brimmeyer is the line judge. Jim Kleinsmith is the field judge. And Michael Donato is the back judge. There they are. Boston College is spreading out to kick off. Doing the kicking for them. Will be Kevin Snow. He's number two. He does all their place kicking. Rutgers huddling with their coach down below. It's interesting that uh, the way they're huddling down there on the sideline. Generally, the entire team gets around uh, the coast, but in that case, it was just the kickoff return team. All right, moving back deep for Rutgers. McCarris will be one of the deep backs. Along with Harold Young. Now wait, they're going to change there. Hooper is the other one. Hooper and McCarris. Hooper's on the near side. McCarris the far side. Here's Snow. And the game is underway. Kick is coming to Hooper on the two. He's out to the 15. And he's brought down short of the 20 on his own 18-yard line. We'll see who made that hit. Number 53 for Boston College. And uh, that is uh, Dombrowski. So we have a first down. Here's the offense coming up now. Rusty Hockberg will be the quarterback. Albert Smith, their leading ball carrier. Vernon Williams, the running back. Andrew Baker is the flanker. Pendergrass is a split in, and Alan Andrews is the tight end. There are the offensive linemen for you. First down, Rutgers. Put it on their 19-yard line. Going against the five-man line, Hawkberg throws on first down. He has the receiver, and the pass is complete. Hanging on to that at the 32-yard line is Andrew Baker, the flanker. First down, Rutgers. There's a the defensive line, Thomas Harrington, strongest man in the field today. The nose guard, Mike Ruth, bench presses 580 pounds, poses at right tackle, and the defensive right end is Chuck Gorecki. Secondaries, Russell, Eiton, Thurman, and Pereira. Hockbird to throw again. And he has another man open at the 47, and that is Boris Pendergrass. Pendergrass. And I think we saw the strong arm that this young quarterback has. He was moving to his right, moving forward, and he really drilled that ball. So two plays, two passes, two completions, and two first downs. That was a 16-yard gain. Rutgers now is on their 47-yard line for the first down. Williams goes out at fullback. Curtis Stevens, 48, replaces him as the up back. The tailback is Albert Smith, 33. Very dangerous runner, Albert Smith. Here's Hockford for another pass. And that one is completed to uh, Andrew Baker, the flanker who slides out there. Last year, he set a single season record for passing yardage receptions for a Rutgers receiver. I think we see what, what they want to do. They're coming right out throwing that football, something that we anticipate Boston College doing. But Rutgers is playing that role right now, and this quarterback is on target. Hochberg's three for three, 35 yards. Second down. And three to go for Rutgers on the Boston College 46-yard line. And that's the fullback, Curtis Stevens. And he has a first down. Three first downs in a row for Rutgers. They come out here fired up. Peter Holy made the tackle. Well, three passes in a row. That spreads out that defense. They're anticipating, concerned about the pass. Now, all of a sudden, wham, right up the middle. There was a fine hole there. And the fullback, Stevens, was able to get through and pick up the first down. So they're on the move. 40-yard line right now for Rutgers. Boston's College, two starting linebackers, Gafty and Hemmer, are injured. They're not starting. 
Another rollout. Throws it deep, 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 and it is out of bounds. The pass intended for 81, Andrew Baker, being covered by Dave Pereira, the strong safety number 41. Trying to go up top. They've thrown three passes in front of the defensive backs. Now they thought, well, perhaps they're going to come up and take the bait, so they wanted to go deep. That time he was well covered, but also that time Boston College put some heat on the quarterback, Hockbird, because they were only rushing three men prior to, to that last play. That time they went with five. Second down, 10. Rutgers on the Boston College 40-yard line. We're early, no score. The I formation. He'll throw again. There it is. This one is a comebacker. It's complete, and it is going to be complete at the BC 33. Todd Russell, the cornerback, nailed Andrew Baker there. The play went for seven, though. And it's third down, three to go, Rutgers. Baker really made a nice catch because if you take a look, he's going to catch the football in his hands. It is a low throw. The first thing you have to do, concentrate on the ball and look at it. You can see he's doing that right there. Picks it up down by his ankles, picks up about seven yards. So puts him in a situation where it's third and short. Third down three. Rutgers has moved from their own 19 to the Boston College 33. Blitz is on. And they got him. That was John Boza, the right tackle, knifing through from Keene, New Hampshire, who put the heat on him. He's probably the second best defensive player in the team. Mike Ruth, the nose guard, is the first one. The best type of pass defense is what you're going to see right here. Get those big linemen, get his hands on the quarterback. Now he's going to get rid of the football, but he's got the heat. Now he's probably going to remember that the next time because the linemen now are getting some penetration for Boston and sacked him, although he, his arm was in motion. Punt formation. Gary Liska's averaged 37.3 yards a punt. Tony Thurman, back of the safety man. Yes. It goes to the short man, and he tried to get rid of it. Mike Ruth, the powerful nose guard, stormed in there, number 68, and hit Jack La Prairie who was the up back, and it, I think they had a fake punt on. Yes, they did. La Prairie was a quarterback last year, so this makes some sense, but the snap was really tough. You're going to see it. It looks like it was going back to the center. La Prairie stuck a hand up there and caught it. I don't know as if the center really was intending to snap it to La Prairie, but I'm sure the play was called. That was a situation down near the 40-yard line. It was a good move on the part of uh, Rutgers to go for it. All right, Flutie puts him down. Gives the ball to Stratford, the tailback. He hurdles over the 45, comes out to the 47. Tackled by George Pickell, the nose guard of Rutgers. Here's the lineup for Boston College. Flutie, the quarterback. Stratford, the tailback. Strahan is the fullback. Kelvin Martin, Gerard Phelan are the wide receivers. And Scott Gieselman is the tight end, but he goes out right now. And Casparillo comes in to replace him. The offensive line, Regent Bardwell, Bignell, Trapello, McDonald. Yes, Bignell is the coach's son. It is a second down and five. They have Stratford again with the ball. And he tries to dodge back. He wriggles his way. And he's just short of the 50-yard line at the 49. We told you they were going to try and get the ball more to him. They can get the ball to this back who's got great quickness and get some yardage out of him. It's going to take a lot of pressure off the passing game and Doug Flutie. And it's going to mean that the linebacker is going to be up near that line of scrimmage, trying to worrying about the running game. And when that happens, Flutie will really pick you apart. Third down and two. You saw Big Nell send a signal out there for this play. Third and two on the 50-yard line for Boston College. No score. 11-19 to go in the first period. Woody on the handoff. They've got a first down and more. That's Troy Stratford. He's averaged four and a half yards a carry, this junior. Scored three touchdowns. DC first down. Duffy, Yukoski, Pacal. Sagnella are up front, four-man line. Washington, Stowe, and Oak are the linebackers. Young, Twomley, Cummins, and LaPrairie are the secondary. Strahan is out, two tight ends in now, Giesemann and Casparillo. They have a lone setback, first down on the Rutgers 40-yard line, B.C. Flutie has yet to throw a pass, but now he's going to. Screen pass. Right, right through the arms of the receiver. 
Gieselman. He had a screen pass uh, to yeah. the right to Stratford. He looked out and someone was, was standing right next to him, so it was a good thing that he didn't do it. Now, there was the option that the quarterback has. He has the tight end go down and hook or turn in the middle. The play was actually the screen pass because the lineman went out there, but if he's covered, he has somebody to go to. He has an outlet. Gieselman goes out at tailback. Strahan is in at fullback. Strahan will be number 33 with a six-yard running average this year. Stratford's carried the ball three times, 19 yards. Second down, 10, Boston College on the Rutgers 40. Out of the eye. He's checking off. That's Stratford. He plows his way to the 35 of Rutgers. Flutie, like uh, we were seeing in the pregame show of, uh, of Bernie Kozart, they have the option to check off at any time from any a running play to a pass play, a pass play to a running play, anything that they have in their offense. Coaches permit them to do that because they're both very intelligent quarterbacks. Flutie is an intelligent quarterback. Brendan Murphy goes in, a third string tight end replacing Casparillo. Murphy will be number 87. This is the third and five play for Boston College on the Rutgers 35. Great drop back. There he is, Stratford on the way. Touchdown, Boston College. He read it. He read it. The blitz was on. You were saying, well, what are they going to do against Flutie? Are they going to blitz him? Are they going to just rush three men and put eight back? That time they had the blitz on. Flutie read it all the way. He had his back coming out of the backfield. Here you, you're you going to see it. Here they come. They're after him. He reads it perfectly, gets the ball up a nice, easy, lofty throw. Wide open to Stratford, catches it. Nobody around him. Easy touchdown for Boston College. And they score with 9.59 to go in the first period. Kevin Snow will try the point. He's hit 19 out of 21. Flutie had just thrown his 15th touchdown pass of the year. The kick is up, and the kick is good. Well, Boston College grabs the initial lead here in the first period. Both teams moving the ball. We should have an exciting game, and there's the score. Who says you can't have pinstripes and rock and roll? Who says you can't taste life without it taking its toll? Michelob Light, oh yes you can. Michelob Light, oh yes you can. Michelob Light, super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light, oh yes you can. Have it all. Feel it. Here, Noxzema Shave Cream for extra sensitive skin. Feel that soothing blue lather protecting you from irritation. Feel the closeness. Feel the comfort. Nothing else comes close. Medicated Noxzema Shave Cream for extra sensitive skin. Let Noxzema feel it. Feel it. Nothing else comes close. Kevin Snow will kick off again for Boston College. And the same two deep men for Rutgers will be back there. Number 17 will be Dan McCarris. And number 43, Dwayne Hooper. Hooper will be the closest to you. Looking at that fake punt situation that Rutgers put themselves in, had that been successful, and it looked like it could have been, but the snap was rather strange to me. It looked like he put so much zip on the ball that he was aiming to snap it to the, to the punter. But they were able to move the football the first time they had it. Well, Rutgers took the opening kickoff, started on their 19. Move to the Boston College 33. Then that fourth down fake punt went astray for him. Boston College came right back from their 33. Moved to the Rutgers 35. Then Flutie through the 35-yard scoring pass. Evan Snow from Marlboro, Massachusetts. Boots it. A high short kick. Hooper on the 7. Out to the 10. The 15. The 20. And he tumbled at the 20. And going down there to hit him is number 36. Peter Holly. Peter Holly, the linebacker. It's a good thing he did because there was looked like he was going to have a seam. If he'd have shot through that seam, it would have been clear sailing down the sideline. Rutgers on their 20, first down. They came out throwing the last time, Len. We'll see what they, what they do now. Throwing will spread out that defense of Boston College. Albert Smith's the tailback. 
Curtis Stevens is the fullback. In motion goes Andrew Baker, number 81. Fullback gets the ball, nothing. Hit by Scott Harrington, number 52, the left left tackle. That was the old fake play or give it play where you where you pull an offensive lineman out of there and hope that that defensive man chases him. That time the defensive man did not chase and he was right there to make the tackle. We'll be keeping our eyes on Mike Ruth. He's just a junior from Norristown, Pennsylvania. Jack McNell said he's one of the greatest middle guards he's ever seen. The bench press is 580 pounds, which is almost unbelievable. Anything over 500 is exceptional. Very strong, agile player. Hawkward gets it away. And that guy, he caught the ball. Baker made a spectacular catch on the Rutgers 49, surrounded by Tony Thurman, who, by the way, leads the nation in interceptions with seven this year. And with 20 career interceptions, his tops in the country. Well, that was a great catch because I thought it was going to be intercepted. The defensive back, strong safety, Pereira was right back there. Looked like he was going to come up and make the interception. Baker made the catch, though. Good play. Roy Norton is in for John Bose at right tackle. Five out of seven for Hockberg in the game. And that pass, he uh, had a big rush on him. It was intended for Baker. He just had to throw that one. Roy Norton was coming hard to him, and he got rid of it in a hurry and didn't have anything on it. He Second down, a, 10. Had the man open out there. So if he's going to get the time to throw the football, looks like today he's on target. He had uh, Baker out there. Baker had a step on the defensive back. Baker's already caught uh, three passes, 13, 7, and 30 yards, the leading pass receiver in the game. And a couple of those have been really outstanding catches. 7 to nothing, Boston College. Rutgers ball on their own 49, second down 10. He just threw that one away. They got messed up on the count. Now, what happened there between the quarterbacks? The center snapped the ball. He saw the defensive man move and thought maybe he was infringing on that neutral zone. He snapped the ball before the count. The quarterback had the football. Nobody was moving or off sides. And the quarterback didn't hear any whistles, so he wisely got rid of the football. Rusty missed seven games last year, a bad knee injury. He's from State College, Pennsylvania. Then State let him slip away. His father, uh works for the University of New Third down 10 for the Scarlet Knife of Rutgers. This pass is over the head of the intended receiver, Boris Pendergrass, 83. Pendergrass is an IC4A indoor hurdles champ. And the Rutgers offensive team comes off, they'll have to punt. Well, I noticed this, that Boston College defensively has been playing Rutgers wide receivers man for man. Now that time, uh, Todd Russell was all over Pendergrass. They're going to play man to man all day with the great speed that Rutgers has. They can get burned. Gary Liska is the punter. Kelvin Martin, a flanker, is the safety man. Back at the 10 yard line for Boston College. He hoists this one up. Martin is calling for a fair catch on the 16 of Boston College, where the Eagles will put it in play. 34 yard punt, no return. We have a timeout call. It is 8.42 to go in the first period. The timeout on the field. The score, Boston College 7, Rutgers nothing. We'll be right back. This is the Cat Sports Network. LaSalle Seiko. Superb design. Responding to the challenge of the highest quartz technology. LaSalle Seiko. Thinness, at times almost two-dimensional. Form that reaches for perfection. And now LaSalle Seiko Gold in the preeminent 14-karat timepiece of this decade. LaSalle Seiko, among the world's great possessions. Available at John Gerald Jewelers, Hicksville, New York. Who has intelligence, powerful sound, and moves with ease? Only RCA. Introducing the ultimate VCR. It's easily portable. It's intelligent, so you can select by remote control exactly what you want to record right from your TV screen. And it has powerful VHS hi-fi sound that's superior to any audio cassette. The ultimate VCR, only from RCA. Technology that excites the senses. Rutgers made two defensive changes in the secondary. Roger Pollard, number six, in at strong safety. And Dan McHara, 17, is in at cornerback, replacing Steve Farmley. Stratford, Rahan, of the running back. 
a Stratford. Stratford over the 20 to the 21 yard line. He's hit there by number 56, Barry Bukowski, the defensive tackle. They'll spot the ball down on the 21 yard line of BC, second and five. Right at the ground level. Here you're taking a look at the tight end, Scott Gisham, number 83. And here you see the back coming. He's trying to find the hole. They had no penetration, as you notice, by Rutgers. Now, if you're not going to get penetration, you're not going to stop that ball carry. And he picked up a good five yards. Flutie's baby brother's in there now, Darren Flutie. He's a freshman from Nady. That's Stratford trying to find a hole, and they gang up on him and stop him for a loss at the 20-yard line. Roy Oak, the inside linebacker, who's made 48 tackles this year, he's number two on the team in tackles, made that initial hit for Rutgers. It's a loss of a yard. It's third down and six. Two plays in a row yet, you witness. The first play, there was no penetration by Rutgers. They picked up five yards. That time, they got penetration. Stratford really had no place to go. He's dancing around back there. The reason he was dancing is because of the penetration by the defensive line. Giaquino is in, a junior. Phelan is out, a senior. Third down, five. They give the ball off to Stratford. He's back to the 24. Bring up a fourth down, and Boston College will have to punt. And Bicknell didn't kid us. He's, we're going to try and run more. We're to going to try to give the ball to our tailback, more Stratford. He looked like that there was a nice hole there. It looked like he was going to break it, but a good defensive play by Rutgers prevented the first down. So they have discovered this, that they can stop Doug Flutie and uh, the Boston College Eagles. Now they got to get the ball in the end zone. Steve Peach is the punter. He's the second string quarterback. He's averaged 38 and a half yards a kick. Taken by McHarris in the 38, and they bury him down there. And there's a flag drop. They dropped the flag. John covering is Deegan. Let's see what this flag about. This is the first one we've had dropped today. 38 yard punt. Clipping on the run back wasn't much of a run back, but enough time for somebody to come into uh, Boston College player from behind. They'll mark it off. Silly move. You should never do that. I mean, he's he ran right up the back of one of Boston College players. That spots the ball on the Rutgers 23, where they have a first down. Personal foul. Clipping on the run back by the receivers. 15-yard penalty. First down. Six forty two to go in the first quarter. Boston College ahead of Rutgers seven to nothing. We'll be back. <coughs> so with some you may not be able to reach everywhere you want any time you want and a faraway message may feel far away. But you can always count on AT&T the only long distance service that lets you call from anywhere to anywhere with operators standing by. And with AT&T, your calls will sound as close as next door. So why settle for anything less? AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. Reach out and touch someone. Some make greatness look simple. Like the great Gretzky and Canon's new vision of photography, the inspiring T70. With the pure agility, the complete versatility of touch button control and three distinct program modes. Now, Canon makes it simple to handle any shot. The inspiring new Canon T70. It makes the great shot simple. Part of the foliage, you can see, well, still some color, but uh, the peak is past. This is almost fantastic up here. What is it, about two weeks ago or a week yeah, or two ago? Yeah, about two really weeks beautiful. ago, uh, early October in Boston, up in New Hampshire, Vermont, late September, the first week of October. Bumper to bumper, they come from all over to look at the fall foliage panorama. First down, Rutgers on their 23-yard line. They're trailing 7 to nothing. Quickie. That is incomplete to 83. Boris Pendergrass is split in. Boy, hit him right in the hands. That was a good call. Man-to-man -man coverage out here on the corner. A little hitch pass. Firing that ball out there. And that was an excellent throw by the quarterback, Hockberg. To join us late, Rutgers moved from the 19 after receiving the opening kickoff. Stalled at the 
BC 33, then BC moved to the Rutgers 35, and on a blitz, Doug Flutie read it, tossed a 35-yard scoring pass to his tailback, Troy Stratford, and that's been it. The kick was good by Boston College. Second and 10, Rutgers. Blitz is on. That's complete. Baker's getting open. That's his fourth reception in the game, Andrew Baker. A senior from Trenton, New Jersey. Two plays in a row now. You, you just saw Pendergrass. The ball hit him right in the hands. An easy catch, and he dropped it. Now they throw the ball out to Andrew Baker, and he's made uh, about three of those catches. Really been really fine catches. The thing that he does so well is he catches the ball in his hands. And what that does, it makes you concentrate on the ball. You've got to follow it all the way in. Well, it's been a sort of an upset here. Hochberg is doing all the passing. Flutie's only throwing two passes, and Hochberg is gunning. Here he is again to throw. Shoots it out. It is nearly <laughs> complete. The number 83, Pendergrass, on a deflection. Alan Andrews is really an outstanding player. The number 86 you're seeing to the left of your screen right now. They are concerned about him. As you can see, the linebacker's chasing him right now. He's going over to that area. He's got a defensive back also. So they have two men making sure that Alan Andrews does not have too much space out there. He is the primary target for the for the quarterback Hockburn. Baker's caught four passes for 69 yards already. Second down now, 10 to go. Rutgers on their 42. And they have a draw play and barely, oh, what a drive. And going to the 41 is Albert Smith who has averaged 4.9 yards a carry this year. He's been the leading rusher every year as a freshman, as a sophomore, and again this year as a junior. Here you're taking a look at what the running back is looking at. Now, I don't know whether it's uh, great running or poor tackling because, as you can see, there are about four or five Boston College players had an opportunity to bring him down. But I notice another thing, that he really wrapped both arms around that football, not taking a chance on the fumble. Another rollout pattern. This one is just incomplete. Andrew Baker gambling on the interception with David Pierre. Herrera tried to get it. He's a senior of Riverside, Rhode Island, and he had clear sailing yes, yes, right down the sideline. I think you're taking a look at both quarters, in per, quarterbacks in particular. Hockberg, now he's had some room out there when he rolls out that he does have an opportunity to run, but I think he's been told not to because of the knee injury he sustained last year. They don't want to take any chances on him getting hurt. Hockberg has already thrown 14 passes in the game. Flutie just two. Banging over the 30 and to the 38-yard line is Albert Smith. Teaming up to put him down. Scott Harrington, the left tackle, and John Galvin, a second-string left linebacker today. Once again, Rutgers on the move. The first time they had the football, they took it down to about this position. You may recall, though, on fourth down, they, they tried something kind of fancy, snapping the ball to the, to the up man. Did not make the first down situation, but they are moving the ball on Boston College. They have a third and eight on the Boston College 38-yard line. Flags down. BC may be offside. There's a sack on the 50. And that's John Galvin, a blitzing linebacker, coming in. Another flag goes down. I thought Boston College looked offside, Lenny. Yes, I did, too. It was a long count, and he altered his cadence, drew them offside. The blitz was on. Offsides on the defense, five-yard penalty. And also face, face mask. a face yeah. mask, five-yard penalty on the defense. Two penalties against Boston College initially at the snap and offside. Then when they went for the quarterback, they grabbed his face mask and they're hit with another one. Last third down situation that Rutgers was in besides this last play, Boston College blitzed the quarterback, and that's what they were trying to do that time. But Hockberg did a good job of making sure he delayed that count and got him to jump off sides. That's a free five yards. Alice, listen. On the defense, five-yard penalty. Face mask on the defense, declined. Still third down, third and about three. On the 33-yard line now at Boston College, they accepted one, declined the other. They had the choice there, and it makes it third and three for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers on the Boston College 33. This is a two-down situation right here. 
They're going to make it on this, this play. Go on fourth down. They pitch it to Smith. Got it. He's got it. Roars around his left end and goes out on the BC 30 yard line, driven out by the right cornerback, Neil Eiton of East Orange, New Jersey. First down, Rutgers. Now they're in great field position, and most of the time, Boston College defensively and playing Rutgers man to man defense. And I would be surprised to see him go up top to go into the end zone and try to get a quick six. Seven first downs already for Rutgers. Boston College has two. Boston College defense been on the field a lot this quarter. That's Smith changing direction. 30 for 25 to the 24. Mark of a good running back there. One place plugged up. He just ran for daylight and slithered away and changed direction. Got himself six yards. David Pierre, the strong safety, brought him down. That's a worry Jack Bignell right now. Yes. Rutgers moving against him. Well, that's right. I mean, that's one thing that you don't want when you have a great offense to have them sitting on the sidelines. Rutgers right now doing a fine job of keeping Flutie on the bench. Second down four for Rutgers. Boston College is 24. Fullback has it. He's banged up. First man to reach him, Mike Ruth, number 68, helped by Scott Harrington, picked up maybe a yard on the play to the Boston College 23-yard line. Curtis Stevens, number 48, from Summerdale, New Jersey, carried that ball. He's only carried the ball 30 times coming into this game, averaging five and a half yards a crack. That's good. Let's put him in a third and three situation. They're basically in the same situation they were in the last time on a third and three situation. If they don't make it on this down, if they don't want to go for the field goal, they can run for it on fourth down. Third down three. The pass. The pass is no good. He's out of bounds. Baker up there with those good hands of his, but he didn't have that foot inbound. What he did not do, he did not take his man deep enough as a flag is thrown down on field, and we'll find out what that is, but he did not take the defensive man deep enough because when the quarterback has to roll out, that takes a little... Holding on the offense. Takes a little longer for the quarterback to release the ball, so you either have to just hesitate a little bit or take the route deeper. Now they're explaining... The options here, this will either be a 10-yard penalty, the down will remain the same, or if Boston College declined it, it would be fourth and three. But I think they're going to accept it and try and move them back, make a field goal more difficult. They'll still have to stop them on a third down play. This puts the ball on the Boston College 33-yard line. And the last time in a third down long situation. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty, still third down. Boston blitzed. It is third down and 13. Vic Anderson, the Rutgers coach. Brian Cobb comes in as a flanker. Albert Smith goes out. They're going to spread three wide receivers out now. With a slot right and a lone receiver on the left side. Third and 13, the lone setback. You got a man to man. The blitz is on. Hochberg is going back. He's shooting it deep, deep, and it is. Maybe interception. No. Looked like an interception. Todd Russell had that ball in his hands. Number 45 couldn't hold on to it. The pass intended for the speedster Boris Pendergraft. They were going up top. This was not the right pass pattern to throw because here it is. You're seeing he's just going up top, almost intercepted. But this was man to man coverage. And had he. As you can see the play right there, a good job of Pendergrass of stripping that ball away from the defensive man, making sure it was not an interception. But they had the whole field to run in, and they just ran straight ahead. Rutgers has had the ball about 60, 70 percent of the time in this first quarter. Thurman's a safety man. The punter is Gary Liska for Rutgers. He tries to just pooch it up there. Fair catch call, and he takes it on the nine-yard line, and that's where Boston College will be pinned back. We have three minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first period. The score, Boston College seven and Rutgers nothing. Full on off-road racing. At Mitsubishi, we do it to build you a better truck. Along the way, we happen to win the World Off-Road Racing Championship, which all goes to prove every Mitsubishi truck, from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive to turbo diesel, is tough to beat. And easy to own. Who says you 
you can't have it all Who says you can love your work and leave it to Who says you can't taste it all without it telling on you Michelob Light Oh yes you can Michelob Light Oh yes you can Michelob Light Super premium taste in a less filling beer Michelob Light Oh yes you can Boston College, which has had the ball very little in this first quarter. They've had the ball four minutes, 25 seconds. Rutgers, seven minutes and 15 seconds. The problem is that Rutgers had two opportunities moving the ball down there, but they did not get any points. He sees on their nine-yard line with the first down. Flutie fades the throw from the goal line. The pass there. He's got him, and he hits him. That's number 23, Stratford. Troy Stratford has caught his second pass of the game. One for a touchdown, and that gets BC out of trouble. They seem to be going back the other direction. I see a flag there, but this is really an excellent pass. Here he is in the pocket. They keep talking about his height. Height doesn't mean anything. You don't ever throw over anybody. But he makes a perfect strike to Stratford down between two defensive backs, but they're going to bring it back because of a penalty. They have an ineligible receiver downfield. Well, it just shows you how quickly the foodie can hit and how quickly he can move that football. That was an excellent throw. Doug Flutie right now currently is fifth in the nation in passing. Bosco of BYU is first. Flutie threw his 15th touchdown pass today. Cunningham, uh, University. Ineligible receiver downfield on the offense, half the distance to the goal. It's a loss of down penalty. Going to be second down. Ball will be on the four and a half yard line, second down and 14 and a half. He lost the down two. Darren Flutie goes in as a flanker and they're still backed up against their own goal line and Flutie has a 31 yard pass wiped out. Bradford trying to skirt the end. They bang him down on the six yard line. Good penetration by uh, Steve Twombly. Coming up from his cornerback position, comes up and makes a good play. Now they're now they can hear it is. You're right. You're the quarterback, I guess. Handing off to, to Stratford, coming around to the right side. Guards pulling. But you can see coming up right now is the cornerback, Twombly, that made a good play. Getting that penetration. Boy, it's so important to get penetration and force that back to go where he does not want to go. Rutgers has an extra defensive back in. Dan McHarris, they take a defensive end out. Tom Duffy, it's third and 13. Flutie out of the end zone. Look at that time. There's a man, Ryan. He overthrew him. You don't see him do that very often. He overthrew the receiver, the tight end, Scott Gieselman. And uh, little Doug's disgusted with himself as he goes yes, over Yes, he is. There. But here's a situation. When you're back in your end zone, you want, you, the number one thing you do not want to do is throw the ball up for grabs and have an interception. He just made a bad throw that time, proving that he's human like everybody else. But... Uh, he overthrew the man that was open. I'm sure that he was going to make sure that, you know, it's going to be too far rather than too short. Rutgers should have good field position. There's a kick by Peach. It's tumbling to McHarris in the 44. It comes to the 40, to the 35, to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, to the 10. In. And he goes for the score. He returns the kick for the touchdown. Great block there by number 97, Jim Fickell. A 38-yard return of a punt, and Rutgers is on the board, and they've outplayed Boston College here in this first period. Well, that was an outstanding run. You were right about the blocking, because you're going to take a look at the McHarris making the... Uh the catch down here but there is a wall he jumps to the outside there's a good block right there by number 58 Jones Mark Jones now he's coming down the kicker has to get into the act and try to make the, the tackle but no way because he gets good blocking finds the seam and gets into the end zone the, the initial block though was made by number 58 Mark Jones a defensive lineman but check that yard he's 44 yards on the punt return Angstad has kicked 14 out of 14 now it's 15 out of 15, and Rutgers has tied it with 2.21 to go here in the first period on the 44-yard punt return. Hatch. 
shoes, helmets, protector devices, and of course, as we told you again, coming up here at halftime, a look at the men who handle all the equipment, the challenging job, and uh, let and I'll be talking about that in a little bit, especially when you go on the road. What do you take for and all kinds of weather? How equipment has changed too. I think the one thing that when synthetic turf or artificial turf came out, the one thing they didn't know anything about, the shoes. What kind of shoes do you wear? And uh, they finally have solved that problem now, but it took several years to discover what would be the best shoes for a day like today when it really isn't wet and day when it is wet. Okay, that's uh, the equipment man. We'll have his story at halftime. All right, back here now for Boston College. Number 21 is uh, Kenny Bell and Tyrone Taylor. Taylor's 21, Bell's 24. It's all tied up. And here is the kick by Gary Liska. And this one is coming to Taylor. Taylor's coming out to the 20. Gets away momentarily and is whammed down on the 25-yard line by number 25 of Rutgers. And that is... Uh, Reynolds Walbrook on the kickoff team. We almost saw two in a row, Kurt, because of another block, and he would have broken that, and it would have been down the sidelines, maybe for a touchdown. That was a good return. Doug Flutie's thrown only three passes in this game, completed one for a touchdown, 35 yards. Jim Brown's a fullback now, number 32, replacing Strahan. First down, BC on their 25. Flutie's pass, out he goes, and it is complete. To number 82, Kelvin Martin. Well, I think you'll see little Doug go to Well, he's now. got better field position now. The last time he's backed up near his goal line, and even at that, he threw a perfect strike to Stratford, but it was called back because of an ineligible receiver downfield. But here he comes right back out and throws a perfect strike, an out pad or a sideline pattern to Martin. That is the Scarlet Knight. First down, Boston College with two tight ends in the game, Casparillo and Brendan Murphy. Out of the eye formation, Stratford. Stratford slithers through, and he's to the 44-yard line of Boston College. Taken by John Cummins, the free safety of Roselle, New Jersey. Made 34 tackles this season, right up among the leaders from his strong safety spot. Well, they move both tight ends to the right side, giving them an initial good blocker on that side, pitching it out to the back, and uh, the tight ends did the job, found a hole for the running back, and he picked up excellent yardage. Gasparillo's out. Calvin Martin back in as a flanker to keep juggling receivers around. Flutie to fade, time, time. A little short one is complete to Stratford at the 50-yard line. Gets away. First down, he's into Rutgers territory. He's elusive, and oh. he's good balance. He's not too tall. He's a low center of gravity, and he's hard to knock down. Well, he's really quick. He coughed that ball up, but fortunately, uh, his running back was back there to make the recovery. Jim Brown picked it up. That time, Flutie was really looking downfield. He had the old sideline and up pattern to his flanker, Martin, but he was well covered, so right away, he knew where his outlet man was located, came back in the middle, and got the ball to Stratford. Now they get a couple second string flankers in there. Gia Quinto and Darren Flutie, Doug's brother. Slot left. Stratford is nine out of 29 and running. This is his 10th time and uh, they've got him. He made a yard and that's about it. To the Rutgers 47. Tyron Stowe, the middle linebacker from Mosaic, New Jersey. And Roger Pollard, the strong safety, were the men to take him down. It is second down, nine for Boston College. We're tied up seven to seven. We have 48 seconds to go in the first period. Now the first string receivers are back in. They're altering them because I think what they're going to do, they're going to be a lot of running a lot of deep patterns, so they want some fresh legs in there at all times. Moody looking. Good. Throw. He's got him. Phelan. Phelan's to the 25. Gerard Phelan of Rosemont, Pennsylvania. He and Doug Flutie have been roommates for the last three years here on the campus. He's caught 33 passes, the leading receiver this year. Here it is. He's coming right across the middle. The outlet man, as you can see right there, 23, Stratford. He holds the linebacker, holds him up close. That's when they're talking about throwing between the coverage. The linebackers were up near the line of scrimmage. They were there because of the back was there holding them there. Then that receiver slips behind them, and Flutie, of course, made an excellent throw. They put Stratford out now. He's out there as a wide man and a slot right. Now here he comes in motion. First down, Boston College, Rutgers 25. 
driver rushes on. Got there he is. Just ticked away. Looked like a sure touchdown. It was saved for Rutgers by Roger Pollard, number six. Yeah, they found a man-to-man -man coverage. When he went in motion, he went man-to-man -man with the defensive back. He was open. Here you're seeing in motion, coming downfield, number six has got him man for man. Now it's a foot race across the field. The ball was not thrown well. It should have been out in front. If it was out in front, it would be a touchdown number two for that passing combination of Doug Flutie to Troy Stratford. Second down, 10, Boston College on the Rutgers 25. This will be the last play of the first quarter. He's got him. That's Giaquinto, number one. And he is stopped inside the 20 by Lionel Washington. That's the last play of the first period. And we're going to change goals now. We've had a very exciting first quarter here at Alumni Stadium on the campus of Boston College. It's all tied up. As soon as that clap goes, I hear this hungry, and it's like, uh, get me a Snickers bar. Snickers satisfies you. If you can have a snack, it might as well be a Snickers, because my hunger's controlled until dinner. Packed with fresh peanuts, peanut butter nougat, caramel, and milk chocolate. Satisfies you. Packed with peanuts, Snickers really satisfies. All the way through the whole bar, it's packed with peanuts. You gotta have a Snickers bar. I mean, it's, it's the thing that satisfies you. Can anyone here name a copier maker that's bigger than Rico? Xerox. Rico's bigger. IBM? Rico's bigger. And we got to be bigger than Xerox by making a full line of copiers that win top marks for quality, like this Rico 6080 console copier. What a revelation. Now, are you still overlooking Rico and the Rico 6080? Call Rico. We respond. Now you can see your way clear to Florida. Eastern Airlines has lowered their prices. For only $247, including coach, airfare, and hotel, you can spend four days and three nights in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, or Tampa, St. Petersburg. So see Eastern Airlines or your travel agent. Florida's beautiful this time of year, and at prices like these, it's worth reflecting on. Ah, the joys of watching football on the Sony. What a picture, what a game. What about the rest of your family? Remember them? They have to use the other set. The one without the exclusive Trinitron picture. The one without the patented one gun, one lens system. The one that isn't a Sony. But do you care about your second set? Nah, you don't really need another Sony, do you? Or do you? Gowdy and Len Dawson, Alumni Stadium, Boston College, 7-7 at the end of the first quarter. Boston College has the ball third and two on the Rutgers 17-yard line. Stratford, yeah. he'll have the first down and more, and he's just short of the 10, giving BC a first down. Roy Oak nailed him, number 44, the linebacker. Good at blocking up front by that offensive line, that right side of the Boston College. Really a good hole there for Stratford. Taking a look at the uh, the first quarter statistics. Not too much difference. Is it 124 to 119? There's no difference in the score, 7-7 right now, but Boston College is knocking. We uh, have talked about Doug Flutie's career passing statistics. They're important. I want to get into that in a minute. Bradford again, a nailing for a loss that time. He's hit there by Tyrone Stowe, the middle linebacker, number 41. Good penetration by uh, by Rutgers. See, feeling we're talking about equipment at halftime is going to be one of our feature. And he has some there. The only reason it's there because something is bothering him. Here it is, a pitch out. Good penetration coming up. Forces him to the inside and really a strong, strong hit by Tyrone Stowe. 6'2", 210 pounds. Bradford's going out. Ken Bell will come in to replace him. Maybe. Yeah, he's in there, number 24. Bradford had uh, nearly 50 yards already in this game as we just start the second quarter. He's been outstanding for Boston College. That's going to hurt. He, was, he caught one touchdown pass. He was open for another one. 
just before the end of the first quarter. But Flutie did not get him the football. Bell is a junior from Greenwich, Connecticut. Carried the ball only 16 times. There he goes in motion. Flutie's pass. Diving catch inside the five by number 20, Gerard Phelan. Phelan is not a burner, but he is a possession-type passer. And you get the ball to him, and he'll catch it. Well, that's the type of receiver you must have. He is going to be in the spot where the quarterback knows he's supposed to be in all the time. Kind of a, a halfway throw, a sidearm throw there. He had to do it because what he was doing is looking for the lane to throw the football. I'm talking about Doug Flutie. Had he thrown that ball overhead, it would have been batted back in his face. Now it is third down and three to go for a first down. Plowing forward is number 32, Jim Brown of Pontiac, Michigan, a senior. Got himself in a mess a couple of weeks ago. Was picked up by the police in possession of an ounce of cocaine. They haven't had a... He was suspended for uh, two weeks. It still hasn't been decided. He's pleaded innocent, and I guess they'll take a look into it. Fourth down they're going for. They have fourth down and a yard to go for a first down. I wouldn't be surprised to see Flutie roll out to the right with all that space out there, either run or throw. That's oh. Bell diving... He's near the goal line. The thing is, does he have a first down, not a touchdown? Kenny Bell trying to dive over. Well, he did get up in the air. It was a nice leap. I don't know if it's far enough, though. Officials call a timeout. We're going to have a measurement. Here it is. It's just straight up and over. And you see him coming into your picture right now, but as you can see, the defense was there. They were anticipating it. They were not submarining. Not all those linebackers weren't really going, so they were kind of anticipating that he was going up in the air. The line of scrimmage, making sure not too much penetration. There really isn't. It's made for that particular type of play, but whether he made it or not, we're going to find out. Looks like it's just short. Short by inches, and Rutgers will take over on their one-yard line as they stop Boston College there. Talking about Flutie and career total offense, he needs 481 yards in his career now to become the all-time leader. The record holder right now is Jim McMahon at Brigham Young, who's now the quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Flutie needs to average about 80 yards a game in total offense for the counting this game, six games counting this one left in his career. He should do that easily. Gary Williams in a fullback, unless he gets hurt, of course. He already has over 80 yards in this game. Quarterback's hit, and oh, it's over the head. Had 81, open. Andrew Baker. Wow, he had him open. If that ball had been thrown to the inside, Andrew Baker would have been a foot race from about the 30-yard line to the goal line to see whether he'd make it or not. He was open. They're getting to the quarterback. John Boza hit him just as he let the ball go. Ockberg is 6 out of 16 for 90 yards. Let's check Flutie's uh, stats. And uh, in career passing, Flutie needs to average 166 yards a game, counting this one and five more games to pass Ben Bennett of Duke as the all-time career passing leader. I wouldn't doubt he'll do that, too. Coming up the middle over the five out to the six-yard line is uh, Vernon Williams, a junior fullback, son of an assistant track coach, formerly at Rutgers. Flutie is six out of nine for 93 yards and a touchdown. There's Troy Stratford, the top running back. He's he probably, probably had a, a problem. Hamstring, I think. He probably had a problem before because you notice that he had some tape on it when he got hit and took that off. They're icing it down, making sure they cut down on the swelling. Third and five for Rutgers from their six-yard line. Draw, a fake draw. The pass is over the head again of number 81, Andrew Baker. And Rutgers must punt from their end zone. Once again, what they're doing, the quarterback has to roll out, so it's going to take longer for him to get set up, to get his feet planted, particularly when he's going to his left and he's right-handed, to throw that sideline pattern. But what is happening, the, the receiver is making the move before the quarterback is ready to throw the football. So what the receiver has to do, he has to delay it longer so that when he makes his move, the quarterback is able to throw the football. Liska, number four, with his back to you in punt formation. Kelvin Martin is the safety man. He's on the Rutgers 47-yard line. BC will have excellent field position if they handle this punt correctly. Zad is going to do the 42, Martin to the 40, the 35, and is taken down there at the 34-yard line where Boston College has a first down. A 36-yard punt. 
Well, we'll see what Boston College does when they take over here at Alumni Stadium. The game is tied early in the second quarter, 7-7. Seven to seven. Hey, everybody, it's Uncle Joe. We all like to spend the weekends with family and friends. That's why AT&T saves you 60% on long distance every weekend, and they don't stop with savings. They give you service, too. Calling from anywhere to anywhere. Operator service calls that sound as close as you feel and 60% off. Joe, knew you'd make it somehow. Savings and service. That's AT&T. The more you hear, the better we sound. Reach out and touch someone. Sleek aerodynamic styling. Phenomenal handling. Advanced electronics. Unexpected comfort and an ingeniously smooth power plant. There's even a full-blown turbocharged model. Until now, an economy car with all this was only a Mirage. It still is the new Mitsubishi Mirage. Boston College ball, Rutgers 34. First down. Rahan and Bell are the setbacks. Lodi's pass, sideline to Phelan. Phelan is whopped right there at the 29, a five-yard gain by Roger Pollard and Steve Twomley in the secondary. Gerard Phelan has averaged 13.7 a catch, a touchdown. He's had a bad ankle, just recovering him from that. Coming into the game now is 87, a third-string tight end, Brendan Murphy. Giaquino goes out. It is second down five. For the Eagles of Boston College and the Rutgers 29 in a tie game. Now they reset. Low pass wasn't a good pass. Kenny Bell dropped. That was a very difficult catch reaching over trying to get one. Yeah, and he was falling out. back. Flutie was falling back. And when you fall back, you, you get all the power off of the pass. I mean, you have to have a really exceptional arm to get any velocity on the ball when you're falling backwards. There is a flag down on the field, as I see right now. The blitz was on that last time, and he read it correctly. He went to the man that he should have, but he just threw it poorly. One thing that's been a little bit surprising, Len, Flutie hasn't scrambled today. He hasn't tried to get out there and skirt the defense, move around much. He's just been settling, sort of pocket passing. Turn it on, man. Defensive holding, 10-yard penalty. Well, that'll go against Rutgers. Defensive holding. I thought we might see him scrambling more, but you know, Jack McNall says, look, he doesn't need, everybody thinks he's a wild scrambler. He's not. He only does it when he has to. Plus the fact that he has had a shoulder problem with his left shoulder, and they don't want to take any chances. You're looking at Jack McNell, the head coach of Boston College. He doesn't want to take any chances of getting his key player hurt because of scrambling. He has the ability to scramble. That's all the opposition has to know, that they know that he can do it. First down, Boston College. Checking off. That was a dangerous pass. There's a flag down. Number one, Giaquino was going for the ball. Number 17 was Dan McHarris down there in the two-yard line. It looks like that uh, there was a busted play. He got the football, I think, before he wanted to. Now, here, take a look at the secondary. Here comes the rush. The blitz is on. Now it's man-to-man -man coverage. And as you can see, all over the field, number one, it looks like Giaquinto is pushing. Yeah, he was, looks like he was pushing the defensive back. But what you could see there was man-to-man -man all over the field. Giaquinto was going from his right all the way to his left. And that defensive back had to stay with him. And he's going against Boston College. Well, he was making sure, which is good. You know, give, at least they still have the football. Giaquinto pushed that defensive back because the defensive back was in the best position to make the reception. Pass interference on the offense. Loss of down penalty. Going to be second down. That's two penalties. You don't see this too often in the game. Two penalties where a loss of a down occurred. But yes. we've had them. That was for a defensive pass interference of second down and 20 yards to go. On target inside the 15 to Gerard Phelan. That's the man he goes to when he has to have the yardage. Well, he is the man that, you know, a lot of people, receivers, do not like to run those patterns in the middle. 
simple reason is when you catch it, you're going to get your head torn off. But you look at this. Look at that's a zone defense. See them backing up, backing up. Now he's finding the open area. There it is right there. The ball is on target, and he makes a good reception. Third down and five for Boston College on the Rutgers 14. This game is tied 7-7, seven to 10-16 seven, to go. I think you can see that the Rutgers is trying to mix it up on Fluting. They blitz him sometimes. Sometimes they go back in uh, his own defense, but he's been reading all of them. Blitz is on again. There's a scramble. Out he goes. He's to the 10, and he skips out of bounds on the three-yard line. But there he is getting outside. That's what I've been waiting for to watch him. And he picked up the first down. He could move those feet, can he? Once again, the blitz was on. Now, see, the last time he completed the pass, they were in the zone. The blitz is on this time. As you can see, everybody's coming, and he has that quickness. He has that ability to jump and run. Now, he's got great quickness. He gets as much as he possibly can. Like he's got feet. a sore shoulder, so he, I mean, he must be a baseball player also because it looked like an excellent slide. He sees on the Rutgers three-yard line. They've got two tight ends in now. Kenny Bell's the tailback. Bell has it. Bell cuts and gets to the one-yard line. Ken Bell is brought down by Roger Pollard to strong safety. Bell, the junior from Greenwich, Connecticut. Good hard running because Rutgers really had him tied up. He got hit at the line of scrimmage, but he, he drove for about two yards on his own. Flutie's 8 out of 11 in this game, passing for 120 yards, one touchdown. Second down, yard to go for a BC touchdown. 9.29 to go in the half. And the old full house. Turner's in there, number 40. Fumble. He got rid of the ball, and everybody goes for it. Jim Brown came up with it. Jim Brown didn't want it, though. <laughs> yeah, it was a fumble at the, uh, at the exchange between the center and the quarterback. And a lot of times down here, the center is down here, and he gets his, his tush down lower than ordinarily because he knows that somebody's going to be submarining. So the quarterback always has to alert that, that center to make sure you do the first thing first, and that is get me the football, then worry about blocking. You know, they, they were stopped on the one-yard line. They had first and goal from the three, then second and one. And now it's third and five as they get stopped again here. That can get very frustrating for a club. That's right. And I look at he's going to throw the football now. They're rushing him. There it is. And it is a little high. Intended for Gerard Phelan. They had a big rush on him. It's a good thing they did because if they didn't rush him like that, he did have a man open by a step or so. He threw it before he really wanted to, but he did the wise thing. As I take a look at the, there's a flag down on the field. Here it is. What are you going to do against this young man to throw so accurately? You better put some pressure on him, make him throw before he really wants to. And he was throwing falling back. So once again, you're not going to get a whole lot of zip on the ball. Defensive, holding, still third down. Now this will move the ball halfway to the goal line. And make it third and two and a half for a Boston College touchdown. Dick Anderson doesn't like it, the Rutgers coach. No, because they made a good play. I mean, defensively, they made a good play. Somebody was holding. Now, he doesn't apparently agree with the call. Isn't that unusual? Do they ever? <laughs> <laughs> Rutgers has had four penalties for 38 yards. That third one, down. That one may have been a very costly one. Two and a half yards to go for a Boston College touchdown. This is a passing situation, too. Got a lot of room to the left. Is it the Bell? Bell is racked up. Fumble. Fumble. Somebody's come up with the ball. Rutgers has come up with it. Tyrone Stowe, number 41, has it. Tyrone Stowe grabbed the ball, and twice Boston College has been stopped on the Rutgers one-yard line in this quarter. Yes, they have, and that was a good hard hit and a good play by the defense because once they made the initial contact, they were searching for that football and stripped him of it. The Rutgers takes over on their half-yard line. There's a timeout on the field with the score, Boston College 7 and Rutgers 7. We'll be right back. This is the Cat Sports Network. Hello, I'm Jamie Farr, asking for your helping hand. Across the world, the hand of care can be your hand. There can be one less hungry child in the world tomorrow. Contribute to care. 
Box 576, New York 10156. Come on, give us your hand. Right in the center of Atlantic City's boardwalk stands Trump Plaza. Atlantic City's centerpiece. Trump Plaza. It glitters. It glows. It's glamorous. There's nothing like it in the world. Trump Plaza Hotel Casino. Atlantic City's centerpiece. Yeah. Thinking ahead to retirement. You mean you want a shelter income and you still don't have a personal banker? Why settle for just a bank when you can have your own personal banker at Irving Trust? Here we're taking a look at that last play. As they coming along the line of scrimmage, number 50 is uh, Pakel. Number 50, George Pakel, is involved in it. I don't know whether he stripped them or not, but the important thing is number 41. Tyrone Stowe is the man that came up with the football for Rutgers. Not in what you would call very good field position, though, on the one-half yard line. It's even less than that. Looks like the, uh, he just barely got it out of the end zone. First down on their half-yard line. Dwayne Hooper is in it running back, replacing Albert Smith. Hooper comes out to the six, gives him some breathing room. Ed Vanessen, the left linebacker, made the tackle on number 43. Important man defensively is a nose guard to handle and take a look at the block on that nose guard. That is not a block. That is a berry or a pancake. He really put him on his back. Hockberg Gilio, the center. What an outstanding block. Hockberg, the uh, starting quarterback, has made only one out of his last ten passes. Getting outside to the six and chased out of bounds Whoa. on the nine yard line is Dwayne Hooper again and chasing him out is Tony Thurman the weak safety but they're out there close to a first down they were on their half yard line to start this series it is third down and a yard to go for Rutgers the score is tied 7-7 seven, 7.44 seven, seven to go in the first half BC has been stopped on the Rutgers one and on the Rutgers half yard line twice in this quarter can't punch it in First down. That's Dwayne Hooper. They gave him the ball, the senior from Collinsville, Maryland, three times in a row. Neil Eiton brought him down. Rutgers big, first big down. Big, big first down, too. Big, big first down. <laughs> Got him out of the hole. Give them a little breathing room. Now are they're at least a position now where they can throw the football. And they have been throwing the football on first down in particular. And they passed it nine times, and they've run twice on first down situations so far in this first half. Report on the BC tailback, Troy Stratford. He will not be back in the game. He has a hamstring. 43, Hooper gets his fourth call in a row. And the tackle by left tackle, Scott Harrington of Westwood, Massachusetts, one of the co-captains. He's number 52. Passing today, Hochberg is four out of 16. He, he started opened out hot. three for three, though. Yeah. Uh, so he's gotten cold. A lot of those passes he's been trying, you know, go for go for the sidelines and that receiver is uh, making his break before the quarterback is ready to throw the football. Second down, eight. Rutgers on their 17 in a tie game, seven all. Fake and now a pass coming in. Maybe they've got him. He throws the ball. Flag is down. That'll be intentionally grounding. John Boza, who's really penetrated today, number 97 of Keene, New Hampshire, the right tackle. He and Ruth are the two best defensive linemen for BC up front. You can't let the man inside get penetration because if a man inside defensively gets penetration, it really wrecks havoc back there with the quarterback. Somebody from the outside, you can dodge him. As you may recall, that Flutie was able to sidestep somebody coming from the outside. But when they came come up the middle, it's really difficult to handle it. Intentional grounding on the offense. Lost it down. There's a third, third one, Kirk. The third loss of down. Now look where they are. Penalty, they're, yeah. they're back in the familiar territory. Anyway, they've been down by that goal line now for the, uh, the entire second quarter. That particular penalty is from the spot where he tried to get rid of the ball after being tackled. 
And they lost the down and they lost 13 yards. It's fourth down, uh, thir third down now, and That's they have 21 yards to go from their four yard line. They're in a mess of trouble. They're going to try and pass the way out. Look out, an interception. Tony Thurman had just intercepted his eighth pass of the season. Right into his arm, and the 21st of his career, he leads the nation's defensive backs this year in intercepting forward passes. Only three men rushing the quarterback, but he's back in his end zone. He knows he's not going to have a whole lot of time. He doesn't want to get tackled back there. He was looking for number 33, Albert Smith, but it was a poorly thrown football. It looked like he got rid of it much too soon. I think the reason for that is because he was in his end zone, didn't want to get a chance of getting tackled there. Well, Boston College has been living in Rutgers territory this second quarter, but they can't get it in after scoring in the first quarter. Flutie Got throwing. It. Here he is. Touchdown. Kelvin Martin, the flanker. Flutie's second touchdown pass of the game. Oh, is he wide open? He beat that defensive back. Steve Twomley, number 21. He's running a post pattern. It was man-to-man -man coverage, and I was just getting ready to say that they've been trying to run the football in. They have not been successful. I look for Flutie to come out now and throw the football, and he did. Good protection, dropping straight back, a little roll to the right, but wide, wide open was Kelvin Martin coming down in a post pattern. You take a look at the good tight spiral right on the numbers where it's supposed to be an easy six points. That's Flutie's 16th touchdown pass of the year. He's 9 out of 12 today, 149 yards and two touchdowns. Just another day for him. Well, I think that you take a look at Flutie that uh, he can get pressure, but he does not get flustered. Doesn't get flustered. He can handle, handle that pressure. Kevin Snow's kick is good. We'll be back here. 6.18 to go and a half. 14 to 7, Boston College. It's here. Noxzema Shave Cream for extra sensitive skin. Feel that soothing blue lather protecting you from irritation. Feel the closeness. Feel the comfort. Nothing else comes close. Medicated Noxzema Shave Cream for extra sensitive skin. Rock and roll. Who says you can't taste life without it taking its toll? Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Michelob Light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Michelob Light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. We're going to show you that touchdown pass, but more importantly, we're going to show you the route. Now, take a look at the right part of your screen coming up top. Now it's a man-to-man -man coverage. He's got him, see, they got him whipped to the outside. That's Martin, number 82, running an outstanding post move all by himself, an excellent throw. That ball was right on the numbers where it was supposed to be. That's Martin's fifth touchdown of the season for Boston College. And here comes the kick. Taken by Dwayne Hooper. Hooper trying to get outside left. Slides away from two men. Good return here for Rutgers. That'll give them some decent field position out to their own 37-yard line. Chris Trapuca went down to make the tackle for Boston College. Did you say Trapuca? Trapuca. One of the Trapucas. Right. Wisconsin, seven over wow. six. Ranked Ohio State in the second quarter. Oklahoma State leading Colorado eight to nothing. And 10 7, Yale nothing in the first quarter. Rutgers ball on their 37 yard line with a first down. Cooper going in motion. Hotberg throws, a short one to the 41 yard line. David Pereira right on the receiver there. Cooper. Four yard gain, second down, six. 5.55 to go in the half. They're going to have to put the ball up in the air. That's fairly evident with uh, less than six minutes to go. But they have, they've got to get the ball downfield a little bit. They haven't been successful doing that since the first drive. This whole second quarter has been played around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's that Ruth. That's right. Mike Ruth. 
He's put. You got to take Watch care. It. I just said you got to take care of that nose tackle if you're going to be successful running the football. Let's see if they do it. Evans, no. He just pushes his man out of the way and makes a good, solid. That's a classic type of tackle. Get that shoulder into him, wrap him up, and put him to the turf. McNell said if he isn't an All American <laughs> interior defensive man, I don't know who is. He's a junior. It is now third down and seven. Hockberg rolling. Now they chase him. He gets away at the first down and slides into BC territory. He had to do it with his legs that time. He hasn't been doing it with his arms. Well, there hadn't been anybody open downfield. We've taken a look at their, their outstanding tight end, Alan Andrews, number 86. We've been looking for him the entire first half. He has been silenced. He was trying to look for him on that play, but he was well carded. But that was a big first down for Rutgers. Excellent field position right now. Plenty of time to get into the end zone. On first down, Hockberg rolling right. Shoots it. Complete. 34-yard line of Boston College. Pendergrass. Receiver, yeah. Pendergrass, 83 from the Bronx, New York. Well, you can see that Hockberg's got a strong arm because he really drills it, particularly going to his right. Now, bear in mind that you're taking a look at that knee over there on that left knee that he had surgery last year, and it's I'm sure it's strong now, but uh, not as strong as prior to being injured. But rolling to his right, it looks like that he is much stronger, can release the ball much quicker, more velocity than going to his left. Hockberg now 8 out of 20. Rutgers roaring right back here, threatening her on the B.C. 34-yard line. A hole open for number 38, Vern Williams to the B.C. 31. Mike Ruth. Ed Von Nessen on the tackle for the Eagles. Gain of three, second down, seven for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Yes, they're doing very well, I think, in this football game. They held uh, Boston College twice down there. They did get hit very quickly with touchdown passes, but when they got down near the goal line, they were able to hold them, keep them out. Second down, seven. Rutgers will stop them again at the 31. Dwayne Hooper is hit by John Boza, the right tackle, 97. He and Ruth, Ruth the nose guard, Boza the right tackle, have really been tops inside for Boston really College. Great penetration. Now they're getting in the backfield, and when the big guy gets gets a hold of you, there's nothing you can do but go down. They're going to have to find some way to, to prevent them from getting so much penetration. One way to do that is with a screen or with a draw play. Third down, seven. Rutgers on the BC 31. Here they come. Here comes the blitz. Hockberg rolling out. And it's held on to at the 20. A great catch there by the tight end, Alan Andrews, number 86. And that'll give them another first down. They've been looking for him all day, but he's been really well guarded. Here it is. The blitz is on. Coming out. Hockberg knows he's got to get rid of that football in a hurry. Once again, he's going to his right. Once again, you can see how the ball gets out there in a hurry. He's able to plant that right foot and fire it. Going to the left. More problems because he is right-handed. Lenny, uh, every play they like to roll out and throw instead of the drop back. Well, because of the two men that again. you just mentioned. Throwing, throwing, and it's incomplete. And no flag. He reached over his shoulder, 43, Neil Eiton of East Orange, New Jersey. But the officials say he was going for the ball. He has the right to do that. And also was very close, too. Here you're going to number 81, Andrew Baker, who's really a fine receiver. Gets his man off. The ball should be on the way now. See, the ball is a little late getting there. He had the step on the defensive man. The defensive man was maintaining that cushion. By that, I mean about a three or four yard cushion between the, he and the uh, receiver. The ball should have been there a little sooner. Second down, 10. And that is number 38, Vern Williams, stacked up at the 17-yard line of B.C. by Peter Holy and David Pereira. Holy the linebacker. Pereira the strong safety. When you take your two starting linebackers out of the lineup, that can usually weaken you. And B.C. is missing Ted Gaffney and Andy Hemmer, both with bad shoulders who are not playing today. And what the job of the defensive lineman will be is to keep the guards off of the linebackers. And they've got... You mentioned Ruth and, and Boza both doing a fine job out there defensively for Boston College. Third down and seven on the BC 17 for Rutgers. He has the time and that's incomplete intended for 81, Andrew Baker. Now it looks like the field goal team will be coming on. That's Tom Angstadt, who has hit 14 out of 19 field goals. He's kicked two of 50 yards, so he has a strong leg. 
Hochberg rolling to his left. I just mentioning that he seems to be much more efficient rolling to his right. But the wide side of the field was to his left. Now, that was not a very well-thrown football. The ones that, when he rolled to his right, he did throw them well. This will be a 34-yard attempt for Rutgers. The kick is up. It's got the legs, and it is good. And Rutgers comes back after BC scored on him. And Rutgers drives down the field, kicks the field goal. So with 2.15 to go in the first half, it is Boston College 14 and Rutgers 10. One reason why Duracell batteries last so long is because we never stop improving them. In fact, today's Duracell batteries will last up to 20% longer than the ones we made just three years ago. And we'll keep on improving them. Because on that score, we have a one-track mind. Duracell, the copper top battery. When it comes to making them last longer, we never stop. There you go. Son, we're really proud of you getting into college. And the orthodontist said my braces would be off in just six months. Even good news can weigh heavily on a family's finances. But thanks to John Hancock, you can balance your needs for the future with sound financial planning, mutual funds, retirement help, and more. Well, everyone, here's to our future. Put the weight of John Hancock on your side. John Hancock, we can help you here and now, not just hereafter. Total offense, very close. Rutgers giving favored Boston College a real scrap this afternoon. Boston College has 204 yards total offense. Rutgers, 187. Yes, I think that the important thing is Rutgers was able to stop Boston College from going in when they were down on the one-yard line twice. Here's the kick. And this one is going to Kenny Bell. Bell to the 20. And over the 25 to the 26-yard line. All he was really trying to do was hold on to the ball when he ran into that mass. Yeah, you could see uh, from that camera shot that we had what it's like for that receiver down there to be taking a look at that ball coming down, knowing that once you catch it in, in uh, just a few instants, you're going to get hit by somebody. Two minutes, 11 seconds remaining in the first half. Boston College on top, 14 to 10. Bell and Strahan, the setbacks. Go to work in the air, throws a short one to Bell. Bell's up to the uh, 30, dancing away, 35 to the 40-yard line. First down, Boston College, at the clock will stop. John Cummings tackled him to free safety. Two-minute drill, getting them up on the, on the ball. Flutie probably does this as well as any quarterback in collegiate football today. He knows his offense. He reads that defense extremely well. Now the clock starts again. And that was a low pass. It was intended for Kelvin Martin out there. The clock stops. That's all he was really trying to do. He wanted to complete the pass. He didn't want to take a chance on an interception. But the thing that they want to do right now with 157 remaining on the clock, they've got three timeouts remaining, is uh, preserve some time, particularly till they get down around that 20-yard line, if they do. Lodi's hit 10 out of 14 passes in the game, 163 yards. His brother's in there as flanker. Now Darren Flutie, he'll be number 26. The second and 10 play. Out they spread. Tight end. That pass is complete to keep them in the tight end of the 40 of Rutgers. First down, Boston College. Tyron Stowe trying to stop him, but is yeah. so big, he just towered above him. Boston College now on the Rutgers 40 first down. 14 to 10, Boston College ahead. A minute 51 to go in the half. He's got the time. Now he snakes away. Now he starts to run it. He's over the line. He keeps going, and he goes out of bounds and stops the clock. Picks up five yards, though. Tyrone Stowe drove him out, the middle linebacker. He didn't want to run. He was looking for somebody deep. His brother was down there deep, but he was well covered. Big tight end was down there, but also he was. Eastman, he was covered also, so he wisely picked up as much yardage as he could and jumped out of bounds. And bear in mind, they still have three timeouts remaining. A lot of time left. It's second down five for Boston College on the Rutgers 35. Wide open, Phelan, he's down to the 
seven yard line for a first down. Gerard Phelan. Well, when he and steps. The there. He's when he gets time out, set. They ask for the time. When he gets set and he makes up his mind where he's going to throw, he said that he really fired that ball. And when they talk about throwing and hitting somebody on the numbers. That's exactly what he did. This is a little play action fake to the right coming back to the left side. Now look at the defensive back turn completely around. He has no idea where Phelan is. This is there live. Is touchdown. Castorello and Flutie took him right down the field. His third touchdown pass of the first half. He does it in a hurry, doesn't he? Yeah, they tried to call a timeout but couldn't get it. <laughs> Casparello, number 85, is the tight end. Here it is. Good pass protection by the offensive line. The ball is just drilled right into the numbers. Boy, he hits people on the numbers. We'll be right between the eight and the five. Now, if you can't catch that, you can't catch a football. A sophomore from Somerville, Massachusetts. Kevin Snow will try the point. And the kick is good. Well, Boston College storms right back after Rutgers kicked the field goal. Still a lot of time left. Minute 24, Boston College <laughs> 21, Rutgers 10. Coming up at halftime, look at the men who handle all that equipment if you see these players wearing down here. And there's a lot more to it than you may think. Now, if you came up here out of Rutgers with the equipment, you'd have to pack for maybe a blizzard. That's right. Snowstorm or an Indian summer day or rain. And you Plus, better have all the proper shoes. That's right. Everything ready. So much detail. I'm checking oh, Flutie's here uh, yardage today. He needed, uh, he's already gone by in uh, career passing. He's now moved into fifth place on the all-time list. He just passed Joe Adams of Tennessee State. And in another game or two, he may go up in the fourth place and pass Mark Herman of Purdue. Remember, he has five more games after today. Coach gave us the game. If he doesn't get hurt and he plays his normal game, I'm pretty sure he's going to wind up as the all-time career passing leader and the all-time career total offense leader in the history of college football. Well, he's going to get total offense. As long as he has to do is show up just about, he'll get that. He's got 218 yards, Len, in the first half passing and three touchdowns. Now he needed 481 yards, right? Uh, yeah, that's for his career, but he may get that the next game. So Rutgers will take over on their 24-yard line. Amazing career for a little man. But is he a little man? No, he's... Here he is. He's 5'9 in height, but he's a big little man. Big arms, big hands, strong legs. Sid Gilman told me, and he spread his fingers apart. <laughs> it's only that much. That's what he means. He says it's four or five inches between 5'9 and 6'1 or 2. What does that mean to a kid like Flutie? Nothing. You can't pass over him anyway. You pass between him. Dangerous pass. Yes, it was. It really indecisive the tight moves, end, yeah. Andrews. And uh, we had Peter Holy standing right in front of him. 1.17 to go in the half. BC stepped out in front, 21-10. Flutie got to a slow start. They didn't pass much early in the game. But once he started to crank up, he's got him rolling now. Well, what happened, too, was that uh, Rutgers had the football in the first quarter. About uh, nine and a half minutes to... Uh, Five and a half. Second and ten. That's not the way. Fine play on the 40-yard line by Ed Von Nessen, who thought he should have intercepted the pass intended for Boris Pendergrass, 83. Now Rutgers quickly is into a third and ten with over a minute to go. <laughs> yes. Three timeouts remaining for both sides. That's a lot of time left. Thank you very much, Boston College. Bill Flynn, their athletic director. Father Monin, the president here. Beautiful campus if you've never seen it. One of the prettiest in the country. Blitz is on. There he is deep. He's covered, though. And it's no good. He's out of bounds. Tom Russell was covering Pendergrass. Rutgers has a fourth down and 10 to go. And will have to give up the ball again to BC. Hartford threw the ball out of bounds. There's no way in the world. I mean, you have to keep it in bounds to have any chance at all. That pass uh, was underthrown. And as most cases, when there's one man to man coverage and the blitz is on, the defensive man had his back to the line of scrimmage. Had the ball been in play, Pendergrass could have come up with it. Gary, let's get a punt. Kelvin Martin, the flanker, is the safety man. 
Minute six to go in the half. They call for a fair catch on the BC 36. Martin does. And BC will have the ball. Telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by Cat Sports. It's intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any rebroadcast, retransmission, or publication without the express written consent of Cat Sports is prohibited. Well, here they come, and little Flutie ready to go <laughs> to work right. again. You got a lot of time, 59 seconds. 59 seconds in the half. He just took them down to field the score. He's throwing three touchdown passes. They got the shotgun on. And there's his deep, but he's got Bell open. Bell has the ball. He's going out of bounds on the 23-yard line. The flag is down. He hit him with a long one. But we have a flag dropped out of the shotgun formation. This will cost Flutie a lot of yardage. Oh, well, it sure will. That's against Boston College. The home fans booing a holding call. Let's see, he'd been out of bounds on the 23. Rutgers only rushed three men that last time, too, so that means you get five offensive people blocking on three. That was a 40-yard pass. He's got over 200 yards already in the first half. Well, he hits him in a hurry. We found that out. First time they've operated out of that shotgun. Oh, that's... Holding on the offense. Still first down. First and 20 for Boston College of their 26. now how'd he get out of there huh? oh. pass is complete to the 40 and down to the 42 is Gerard Phelan <laughs> how'd he get out of that I, they were going you know trying to tear his head off he just ducked and swirled and pivoted back there and just fell away from all the pressure ended up with his quickness to the outside Phelan is 20, 20. Now, he knows that this guy back here can scramble, so he should never give up, and he doesn't. You take a look. He's watching him. He's looking, look, see, looked around to see where the defensive people were located, and he stayed in the open spot. Find the open spot. He knows this. Flutie's going to get him the football. Score is 21-10. Boston College, 37 seconds to go. Phelan's an excellent receiver. Well, he's an intelligent one. You can see from that last last play that so many receivers go down and they're waving their arms down there and right behind them is standing a defensive back. They never look around to see where they are. What you should do is what Phelan did. He looked around to see where the defensive people were located. He went to the open area and stayed there, waited for Flutie to get him the football. Flutie has 248 yards himself in the first half total offense. 14 running, 234 passing. I keep repeating these statistics uh, to you because of the bearing they have on his career total where he could wind up as the all-time leader in the history of college football for career total offense. He's halfway there now to pass Jim McMahon, and he's on his way to passing Ben Bennett of Duke for five more games to go. The pass is no good at the 50 intended for Gerard Phelan. Phelan has caught six passes in this game for 96 yards in the first half. 100 yards a game is a landmark for a good receiver. They just, you know, there are certain combinations, certain quarterbacks and receivers that work together. They, they sort of think on the same level that, uh, that these two gentlemen are doing out there today. We saw a combination last week, too. Ozar and Eddie Brown. Yes. Third down play. Flag is down. Flag is down. Pass is batted away. Should have been intercepted by Rutgers, but we had a flag down. He tried to force that one to Gerard Phelan. Did you notice that Flutie was waving downfield, waving his man where to move because he could see the defensive backs and the, the receiver could not? Told him to move to the inside. Procedure on the offense. Legal procedure against Boston College. Rutgers will decline this. Flutie was a baseball player at Natick High. 
the powerhouse high school football team here every year in this area. I wonder, it must have been a shortstop or second baseman. Yeah, he's sure, he's an infielder. Because you can see the way that he was moving, how he can throw on the run, the way he does. Both to his left and to his right. Throwing to on the right, as we've seen Hockberg do for a right-hander, isn't as difficult as throwing to the left. Hockberg has a problem doing that, but Flutie does an exceptional job going to his left. Steve Peach punts. It's on a 27. Harris has the ball, gets some room. They've returned one for a touchdown. He's out of bounds. Rutgers scored their lone touchdown on a 44-yard punt return by that man. Well, Rutgers has time with 15 seconds to go in the first half. They get a big play. They could at least get in field goal range. Well, listen, Len, uh, you were outstanding quarterback yourself, Purdue. Kansas City Chiefs, first time you've seen Flutie in person. What do you think of him? I like him. I, you know, because he's fully aware of what's going on out there, both offensively and defensively. And he has that composure, just like on that last play, to, to signal with his other hand to his man, move this way because that's the open spot. Hockberg's pass is complete inside the 35 to Allen Andrews, the tight oh, end. And Rutgers comes in and stops the clock with nine seconds to go in the half. That Andrews is an impressive tight end. Yes, he is. Both the couple of outstanding tight ends in the football game today. He was recruited as a defensive back, weighing 220 pounds. Weighs six good, five. Good target, six five. That's an excellent target. Rutgers will have a first down when we resume play here in the last nine seconds. There's time enough also to get at some points, whether it be. A touchdown or a field goal. Nine seconds remaining. You get that ball off, and if it's thrown, it's first down. They stop the clock to move the change anyway, plus the fact they've got two timeouts remaining. At least the field goal kicker is hoping that he gets an opportunity. Tom Angstad. Each team has two timeouts remaining. This would be a big boost for Rutgers if they could get something on the board before halftime. 21 to 10, Boston College. This is the time for that shotgun or that, that spread formation, which is so good that uh, because the quarterback gets the ball right now and he can see the rush coming. Brian Cobb's in the game. There's a pass. Good catch. Oh, batted away by number 17, Tony Thurman. No completion, just an incomplete pass. A jarring hit by Tony Thurman. That's too bad. That would have been it. That would have been the position. It's coming across the middle. Here it is. You're going to see on the right at your middle of the screen right now the zone he's right in the middle of the zone but an outstanding hit on the receiver jarred the ball loose see here's a case too if you go back for the football if at all possible you separate yourself from that defensive man we're going to have a 50 yard field goal attempt by Tom Angstadt he's already booted two 50 yarders this season 14 out of 20 before him or uh, let's see that's no good. Uh, 15 out of 20 he had. So that makes it 15 out of 21. The clock has run out. There's Dick Anderson leading his Rutgers team off the field. And our score at halftime here at Alumni Stadium in Boston College is the Boston College Eagles 21 and Rutgers 10. We'll be going away, but then we'll be back to take a look at the first half and also have our halftime activity. 22 last year in Giant Stadium. Here is uh, the career offensive leaders, Jim McMahon and Flutie. And this is current. Now you see how he's moved up. He was about 500 yards behind, and now he's only 300 yards behind the former All-American BYU player, McMahon, who's now starring with the Bears. And Flutie still has five more games to go after this. He almost will certainly win the all-time offensive leader. Yeah, if he comes second half like he had the first half, he may catch him today. And he's moved up a notch today already. Ben Bennett, he has about uh, 800 yards to go to pass him with five games. He's been averaging 200 and, oh, 70, 80, 90 yards a game, averaging passing. So uh, I'd say he has an excellent chance when like he hangs it up here to be the all-time career passing leader in the history of college football and the all-time career offensive, total offense leader. He's a nice young man on top of all of that. Can yeah, he's that? wonderful. All right, Angstad kicking off. Kenny Bell takes it on the three. 
Boston College out to the 10, to the 15, has a crack. He's at the 30. He's at the 35, the 40. He's on the way. He's at the 40, the 30. He's at the 20. And they got him. Nearly broke a 97-yard run on the opening kickoff of the second half. I think it was William Dunster, number 20, who finally brought him down, but what an outstanding return starting off the third quarter of the second half. Here it is, number 24 is catching it. You're going to see the scene right there. Good block, 87. Bang, gets in the way of two men. Now it becomes a foot race. And the foot race is going to take them all the way down inside the five-yard line before number 20, here it is, Dunster right there, comes up and makes the tackle. But what a way to start the second half. 93-yard kickoff return by Kenny Bell, the junior, who has replaced the injured star, Troy Stratford. Tyrone Taylor now is in there at tailback. They give Bell a little breath. Flutie at a quarterback run. Flutie's over for the touchdown. That's the quarterback draw play. He has now passed for three touchdowns and run for one. Oh, he's had a hand in every touchdown today. Wow. The option play, the, the seam was to the inside, and he saw it right now coming along down the line of scrimmage that you're taking a look at it. It jumps right in. The quickness got him in, but that was an excellent read. I know that the coaching staff really doesn't particularly like him to run with the football because he's had some injury problems with the left shoulder, but that seemed to affect him. Here's the try for point. It is up, and it is good by Kevin Snow. Oh, it is now 28 to 10, Boston College. And they'll kick it off. We have 14.43 to go in the third period. One. Here it is. Kenny Bell Kenny set Bell. it up. Watch him find the crack here now as he starts up field. On. Oh, this is the touchdown. All right, All right. here it is. It's, he's going to reverse pivot, come down the line of scrimmage. 21 is Taylor. He's the option man, but a good block by his offensive offensive lineman. That's uh, for Pillow. Hit a nice block, knocked the outside man out. Gave him that hole that he was looking for, and all he had to do was jump into it. Rutgers now will return a kickoff. Their regular return man, Butch Young, slightly sprained ankle. Defensive player cannot return today. That's why they have Hooper in there, number 43. Well, that's going to be on Rutgers right now. They need a good return. Get them in at least good field position to get on the move. They're down 28 to 10, 18 points. And you can see how quickly Flutie and the Boston College Eagles are able to hit and score. One play. They have to kick off return and then just one play. Wham, it's over with. Waiting for some cheerleaders to get off the field. Now ah, we're ready. And the ball blows off the tee. They were doing the push-ups in the other end zone, and after the push-ups, they were slow getting up. Do they have to one push-up for every <laughs> point that they score if they do 28 push-ups? That's why they were slow getting up. I may be out there the, the rest of the day if they ask me to do that. The kick. It's going to be a squibbler. It's grabbed short of the 25 up to the 30, and over the 35 to the 37-yard line. Well, they got excellent field position coming to... 35-yard line, so they're going to have to put the football in the air, though. Dan Lipset, a running back, about a four-string running back, was playing up short on the kickoff return team, made the grab there. And got it back, so it's Rutgers' ball on their 35 with a first down. they got a long ways to go now. Eric Hochberg is the quarterback. Smith's back in the game. Down as a wide receiver right now. Hockford sort of stumbles back, shoots the pass out, and it is incomplete. Wow. That's a double hit by Von Nessen, the linebacker, and Thurman, the weak safety. He wasn't weak on that one. Boy, he's going to get somebody hurt out there. Now, he's following this receiver all the way down the field. Now, this is coming, and the defensive men know that. They know where he's going to throw. Look at it. They're all over him. And that's about the third real tough hit that Pendergrass has had today. Big hit was provided by Tony Thurman. You may recall that he intercepted a pass 
in the first half. So he is, he's a center fielder out there. He's just reading that quarterback. And if the quarterback only follows one receiver, you're going to find Mr. Thurman right there. He's quite a secondary back. And the rollout is complete to the tight end, Alan Andrews. He's been effective today, that play, getting the ball out to him. Tony Thurman made the tackle, and it looks like a Rutgers first down. At that time, the Boston College Eagles decided we're going to go after the quarterback they blitzed. Line did a good job of picking up the the on rushers and he got the ball out to the big tight end. The tight end is a man that he wants to go to. Andrews really, as we said in the first half, is a fine athlete. He presents a nice target out there, six feet five inches tall. Hockford likes to throw the ball to him. Curtis Stevens is in his fullback now, replacing Vernon Williams. First down Rutgers from the 47. Hockford's toss is what a near Miracle catch that was by Andrew Baker is behind him. Oh, he one-handed it, nearly got it back into himself, but couldn't quite do it. He's quite quite a receiver. Yeah, he made three good catches, but if the ball would have been placed right, that's six points. He had the man beat. The blitz was on, and it was an out and up move. When he ran the out move, the cornerback came up. He was all by himself. Quarterback threw the ball behind him. That's the type of ball that after you release the football, you'd say, please give it back to me. Let me try it again because it was a sure six points if he got the ball to him. Hotsburg is 11 out of 31, 149 yards. On second down, they're setting up a screen. They get it to Curtis Stevens. He roars into D.C. territory to the Boston College 43, taken down by Todd Russell, the cornerback, and Peter Holy, the uh, inside linebacker. And it's a first down situation, the screen pass. That's one way to relieve some of the pressure being put on the quarterback. Take a look at Doug Flute. He's looking on, and he should feel fairly relaxed right now with an 18-point lead here in third quarter. Rutgers on the BC 43. First down. 28 to 10, Boston College in the lead. This will be against Rutgers. Ed Von Nessen, the linebacker, number 55, talking Dead to the official. Defense encroachment. Now they call it encroachment. He jumped across, touched somebody, and jumped yeah. back again. Defense moved first, and the offense also moved. But if the defensive man uh, touched anybody, it's uh, going to go against the defense. Here, taking a look at Rutgers' uh, 84 schedule. Penn State at that time, of course, they're still ranked in the top 20. The Temple, Syracuse, Cincinnati. Kentucky, when they lost to them, they were at that time ranked in the top 20 also, and they beat Army and Louisville. Last week, they thought they had the offense together against Louisville. Albert Smith. He picks up a first down just short of the Boston College 30. He was hit there by Ed Von Nessen and Tony Thurman. Well, Rutgers, here's the remaining schedule now for the Scarlet Knights. They'll play West Virginia on November 10th and close out their season against Colgate. They're playing 10 games on the schedule. Boston College is playing 11. Smith breaks it back. He's very good at that. He gets hit and then twists away from him. He scored a couple of touchdowns this year in that manner. John Boza from behind on the tackle. Rutgers has had its moments in this game today. They've moved the football. Their problem is they haven't taken up advantage of the opportunities that they have had. On the other hand, Boston College, with the exception when they were down there on the one-yard line, didn't get in the score. They've been able to hit you very quickly and get on the scoreboard. It is second down and five. Rutgers on the Boston College 25. There's a quick opener. That should be a first down to the 19. Curtis Stevens, the fullback. A quick hitter right up the middle, Boza and Von Nessen team up to tackle him. Another first down. And they're moving the football, doing a good job, of, uh, but they have to get in to score, and they've got to score a touchdown. I look, I look right now for Boston College maybe to go after him, put the blitz on on this first down situation and stop him. Smith's been the leading rusher in this game, and come. here he is with the ball again. He's to the oh. 15, head on to the 14. He ran into Von Nessen, the linebacker. Tony Thurman, the weak safety. He gave Tony a headache, I believe. We were talking about Iron Head uh, Hayward for, uh, for the University of Pittsburgh. Well, 
They may start calling this young man Ironhead because he really lowered the boom into Thurman. Smith carried seven times, 48 yards, an excellent average. Well, they're picking up five yards at a clip. That's great. Second down five. The pitch is to Smith. There he's hit by number 97, John Boza, the right tackle from Keene, New Hampshire. That play was made by the defensive left side. They got great penetration. Back wanted to go to the outside, but they shut that down right now. I and mean, when he planned to come back, Boza was there to make the tackle. And lost uh, a yard or two. Third down coming up. Now they put him in a passing situation where they have to throw the ball. Third and seven for Rutgers. Boston College 16. Deflected and caught by the quarterback behind the line of scrimmage. Well, let's see who did come up with the football. Albert Smith, number 33. Now Smith did. The, the back standing right beside the quarterback there. Well, the quarterback should have got a little deeper drop when he was rolling out to the left. You know, he's having a lot of problems to the left. Rolling to the right, he doesn't seem to have so many problems, but when he goes to the left, he's having all kinds of problems. Tom Angstadt will try a field goal. To be spotted at the Boston College 29, that means a 39-yard attempt for Angstadt. High hard snap. The kick is up, and it is a good one. That's his second field goal of the game. So each team has scored here in the third quarter. 10-22 to go in the third period. Boston College 28, Rutgers 13. Looks like you're into winning. You bet. Then today Chevrolet has a car for you. Cavalier. Come on in and you'll know. Turn it on. Let it go. It's at your command. Two liters of electronically fuel-injected power. Front drive agility and optional sports suspension. Cavalier. Grab one. If this is today's Chevrolet, it's a winner. Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. Live it. Chevy. Some make greatness look simple. Like the great Gretzky and Canon's new vision of photography, the inspiring T70. With the pure agility, the complete versatility of touch button control and three distinct program modes. Now, Canon makes it simple to handle any shot. The inspiring new Canon T70. It makes the great shot simple. The kicker should only have to worry about kicking the ball. He shouldn't have to worry about the hold. Now, this is a great hold. Take a look at Scott Drake, who's holding. Tough hold. Way up. He's got to get it up. It's the back away from him. It's the toughest type of, uh, of snap that you can have. you got to go backwards, get the ball down on the tee. But he did a great job. Gary Liska, the punter, is kicking off. He squibs it. Gathered in at the 18-yard line, up to the 25. You notice on those squib kicks when they take them up short, first thing they do is get that ball into the belly with both arms around it. They know they're going to be hit very shortly, and don't fumble on that kickoff. Return. Let's show you the type of respect they have for Ken Bell. Make sure he does not get the football, because the last time he got his hands on it, he ran 93 yards to about the four-yard line. On the Boston College 30, they'll put the ball in play. We've got Mark Jones, number 58, who was involved in that tackle coming off the, uh, the field rather slowly. Well, he was just on the kickoff team. Steve Strahan, the fullback, Ken Bell, the tailback, the starter, Stratford, the leading ball carrier, 47 yards. Here's Bell on a reverse. Bell goes to the 35. Fumble. Fumble, let's see. They give it to and him. And Rutgers has the ball. Second turnover against Boston College. One against Rutgers. Now Rutgers hopes they can bounce right back. That was Tyrone Stowe. He's been a real opportunist today. We got another uh, man down, Rutgers man. Now what are we doing? Reversing the decision? We may hear it. Now here's Anderson out beefing with the officials. Whistle may already have blown. If he'd hit on his back, the uh, ball was automatically dead. They first signal that Rutgers had the ball. Now have they changed? It would appear so. Flutie's out, just trotting out to the sideline. 
Well, what had happened, Rutgers' defense came off the field. The offense went on, then they reversed that decision. Now, Boston College will have the ball on their 36-yard line with a second down and four yards to go. The score is 28-13, Boston College. I'm assuming they're going to tell us what they're doing. The injured player Steve Twomley was left the field, a cornerback, and Harold Young had to go in there. Come on, Steve! Come on, Steve! It's an inadvertent whistle. It's going to be Boston College's ball right here. It's second down. Second down and five. He explained an inadvertent whistle. The signal, maybe. All I know is Boston College is lining up on the ball and they're going to snap it. That was a big break for Boston College because Rutgers would have had terrific field position. They moved the ball to the 36 and now back to the 35. Everybody changing their mind. There's Flutie, a little short one. Completes the Giesel and the tight end for the first down. At the BC 43 yard line where he was taken by Roy Oak. Flutie really does a great job of looking downfield and reading the defense. He backs up and he's he's looking at the defense when he goes back there. That's a sign of a good quarterback. A quarterback who follows his receivers, particularly when they're playing zone defenses back there, is going to get his receivers in trouble. What you want to do is come back, eyeball the defensive people, freeze them, and then go to the man that you want to throw the ball to. First down for Boston College. They fake the reverse. Flutie keeps the ball, 45. He's up to the 50, and they stop him there, just short of the 50-yard line. The bootleg, the fake reverse, they set that up earlier by reversing the Kenny Bell. This time he hit it behind his hip and kept going. Well, that's a good play because, first of all, you have to set something like this up. They did, as you mentioned, a couple of plays earlier. And here it is, Flutie coming around. He has the option to run or throw because, as you notice, no offensive lineman uh, went past the line of scrimmage. So if he found somebody open, he gets the ball to him. If not, if he's got some open space, he tries to get as much yardage as he can. He can pick up six. Flutie's ran the ball four times for 25 yards in the game. And breaking through is uh, Steve Strahan, the fullback of Burlington, Massachusetts. And he'll have a first down. Flutie did really a great job of faking after he handed the football off. You may recall he scored on an option when he reverse pivoted and went it into the, uh, into the end zone. But take a look at the fake of Flutie after he hands off the football. Here it is. He hands it off. Now he comes down the line of scrimmage. When he comes down the line of scrimmage, he's going to draw the attention of some people. And that time it was Roy Oak. First down, Boston College in the Rutgers 43. The pass intercepted. Picked off there by Roy Oak. And Oak brings it back to the 46 of Rutgers. I just got through saying that Flutie lo located the defensive players that time. He did not locate Oak. Oak was moving in. He was looking for his receiver all the way, and Oak came in to make the interception. He did not locate him. You take a look right here. Flutie going back in the pocket. He's looking down, looking at his receiver, throws a football, did not locate 44. Did not locate him. And when you do that, when you look at just one receiver and it's a zone defense, you're going to bring people to that area. That's the fifth interception that Flutie is throwing this year. All right, here's Hochberg, the Rutgers quarterback. They hit him and bring him down on the 43-yard line of Rutgers. Mike Ruth, the nose guard, 68. He's had, boy, I tell you, he's had a great game. Look at the arms Look at on those him. arms on no, him. No, you said he, over 500 pounds. 580 pounds bench pressing. I mean, that is phenomenal. Arms look like my thighs. But they aren't handling him today. He's made about four or five big plays. He got penetration there, sacking the quarterback. Hochberg rolling left this time. Shoots it out. He's got a man open. Stepping out of bounds. And Baker's been open in that pattern all day. Just rolling out to the sideline in front of the cornerback. Well, you've got the wide side of the field over here, and you've got Baker's got great speed, so the defensive back is going to give him some respect and lay off of him. The, the, the whole thing is, though, the timing between the quarterback who's rolling out to his left and that receiver on that side. Now, the receiver has to understand it takes the quarterback a little longer to get set up when he's rolling either to his right or to his left, as opposed to dropping straight back in the pocket. Measurement here, it's Ohio State's come up with a touchdown in the third quarter. Wisconsin 10, Ohio State 7. 15 to 8, Oklahoma State over Colorado at halftime. 
Holy Cross leading Brown 17 nothing second quarter. 21 10 Colgate over Columbia. Dartmouth and Cornell tied up in the second period 10 10. Harvard and Princeton all tied in the second quarter seven up. We got about two inches to go for first down on this third down situation. Kirk. Third down inches. He's got it. That is Albert Smith from Union, New Jersey. The junior tailback, their top rusher. Ed Van Nissen took him down, and Rutgers had the first down on the Boston College 42-yard line. Somebody's doing a good job of coaching these running backs for Rutgers to make sure you get both arms around that football, particularly in a short yardage situation like that and also in a goal line situation because that time Smith had both arms really wrapped around that football. That's Tyrone Taylor's father. Tyrone's a third-string tailback. He's been in there in some plays today. First down, Rutgers, BC's 42. 28 to 13, BC leading. There's uh, Stevens. Curtis Stevens, the fullback. Rutgers have been picking up the yes, ground. That time, Albert Smith, 33, the, uh, the running back, was out there fighting and dogging the outside man, trying to get a block, and did a good job enabling the other running back to pick up about seven yards. Ball is on the 35-yard line, or 34, BC. It is second down and two yards to go for the Scarlet Knights. They're in a slot right formation. First man through, Stevens over the 30. First down to the BC 26. David Thomas hammered him. And David Pereira, the uh, strong safety. So Rutgers on the move again. Yeah, it looks, down. That looks like uh, they're back to the original game plan. That is throw the ball a little bit, but try to get the ball and keep it on the ground with the, the good running backs that they have, and they're doing a good job right now. But what they've got to do, they've got to come out with seven points, not three points. They've got to get back in this ball game. Another slot right formation. Here's the pitch, and it is uh, Smith again. Scott Yardage, he's inside the 20 to the 18, taken out of bounds by Neil Eiton, the right cornerback of East Orange for the doesn't it, like this. No, they had the blitz on that time, and they, they ran to the outside. Now, the thing about the blitz, linebackers are coming toward the quarterback, and so they are not coming along the line of scrimmage. That's good hard running by Albert Smith. When the blitz is on, and if you get by that line of scrimmage, uh, it becomes a foot race, generally, between the back and the defensive backs. They've got second down and a long yard to go here. And they may have it that time. A quick hitter by Curtis Stevens, the fullback. Peter Holy made the hit on him. But it's another first down for Rutgers as they move right down the field. They had the, they were basically in this position the last time they had the football, but they got stopped on first down. Now I look for uh, Boston College maybe to come after him. Play him real tight, man to man on the outside. Try to stop him on this first down situation and force him into a passing situation. The second down. They started this drive on their own 46. Lockboard. Smith. Smith hit at the 15 yard line by David Pereira, the strong safety, and David Thomas, the defensive left end. That's one of the few times they stopped in a recent uh, carry. That is, they pinched to the inside. They funneled everything to the inside. Pereira was back out there on the outside to make the tackle. But they were only picked up one yard, so now they're in a second nine situation, and most of the time this is the passing, passing down. Dick Anderson looks on, second down, nine to go. Rutgers, there's a rollout left. He may throw it, and it is a touchdown for Rutgers. It goes to 86 to tight end, Allen Andrews. The Rutgers has bounced back with a field goal, and now a touchdown. Yes, sir, and that time he had his choice. It was multiple choice that time. Pendergast also was open, but number 86, Allen Andrews, his favorite receiver coming out to the left. You see him gimping along on that, lead, that knee there. He's, that's not well yet, but here it is. Good catch, good concentration by the big tight end. You're talking about Ruth. All right, now here's what happens to quarterbacks when they go in the area of those nose tackles. The 500-pound bench press man was just trying to bench press Hockberg. Especially that nose tackle. <laughs> the kick by Angstad is up. 
and good, and Rutgers is creeping back into this game now. There's a timeout on the field with a score, Boston College 28, Rutgers 20. We'll be right back. This is the Cat Sports Network. LaSalle Seiko, superb design, responding to the challenge of the highest quartz technology. LaSalle Seiko, thinness at times almost two-dimensional, form that reaches for perfection. And now LaSalle Seiko Gold in the preeminent 14-karat timepiece of this decade. LaSalle Seiko, among the world's great possessions. Available at John Gerald Jewelers, Hicksville, New York. On the next Benson. He doesn't look at all good. Well, I think you're running a temperature. Clayton, go call my doctor. Oh, sir, can't you just take a bus to the clinic? His sick day for Benson. You come out or I'm going to come in after you. You're not related to Gretchen Krause, are you? Oh, what a great shot. Governor visits sick black friend in hospital. I've got to get a picture of this. That's Benson, Monday at 6 on Channel 11. Rutgers down 28-10 has come back, kicked a field goal. Now they scored a touchdown. It's 28 to 20. Right. And uh, BC had a 93-yard return on the opening kickoff of the second half. Then Flutie on the first play from scrimmage scored. And I thought Rutgers might fold completely, but they oh, haven't. Did. No, sir. All right, here's a squib kick. Angled across the field. Handled at the 18-yard line. Up to the 25. And up to the 30-yard line. Boston College, that's Kevin Sullivan who has the ball. I'll tell you something. If he'd have broken that wedge, there wasn't anybody there because except the kicker, I doubt if he'd have been able to run him down. Boston College on their own 29-yard line. Doug Flutie has thrown an interception in this game. He's attempted 197 passes up to right now and had only five interceptions, one in this game. Cody today is 15 out of 22 for 243 yards, three touchdowns, and he scored a touchdown. Two tight ends on balance to that cell. Bell, all four or five yards. He's out in the 33 yard line. Now Rutgers is uh, scrambling in there. They want to cause another turnover. They could get a turnover down here, and this type of field position would be really. A big, big break for them, but that time, two tight ends in the ball game for Boston College. The overloader to the right side, and he pitched out. Kind of like just the power play to the right. Now, I think maybe what uh, Flutie and Boston College would like to do right now, what Rutgers has been able to do in the second half, run with that football. Second down, six for Boston College. For Han and Bell, the running backs. Now, Brown, there's a pass. He's got a man wide open at the 49 of Rutgers. And he hits number 82, Kelvin Martin of Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, did he did he deliver that one right on the numbers? Coming back, he is so calm out there. Take a look at Flutie. He's so calm. The last time he's out there, he threw an interception. That really didn't phase him because he came right back and really put the ball right where it's supposed to be, right between the eight and the two. Nothing phases him, really. He's really confident all the time. Gives the ball to Bell on the reverse. Bell is pinned in and stopped at the line of scrimmage. He may have picked up a half yard. Hotsburg today. Hotsburg is 15 out of 35, 181 yards and a touchdown. Well, Bell is in the game. You may recall that in the first half, the man who scored the first touchdown was Troy Stratford. He is out because of a hamstring pull. He will not play the rest of the afternoon. But Ken Bell, number 24, taking his place, really has had an outstanding afternoon, particularly that 90 three-yard kickoff return opening the second half. Say a great player for Rutgers today has been their linebacker Roy Oak. He's been all over this field number 44. Making tackles, intercepting, breaking up plays. Second down 10. Flutie out of the pocket. Shoots it and it is complete. The bell. Flag will go. Now they got a flag to hit him over the sideline. Late hit after he caught the ball went out of bounds. Then they banged him. So this will be a long pass yardage completion and a penalty tacked onto it. And he's still down. Ken Bell down on the sideline at the Rutgers side of the field. Tell you something else, Lenny. They had Gerard Phelan wide open down the middle. Yes. He had either two. In fact, Phelan would have been the easier target. 
You might see Phelan spread out in the middle. He comes up in the pocket, and there's nobody there. Look, there's nobody around, nobody to impair his vision. And he fires the ball out to Bell, and Bell makes the catch. But you're going to see right here, way out of bounds, way oh. late. That was Cummins that hit him. And we'll be back right after this word. Evenings from 5 to 11, AT&T saves me 40% on long-distance calls. What could be better? Weekends, I get 60% off with AT&T. What could be better? You don't have to give up any service to save. That's what's better. Only AT&T gives you operator service, calls from anywhere to anywhere, and up to 60% off. Now, that's what I like to hear. That's AT&T. The more you hear, the better we sound. Reach out and touch someone. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can love your work and leave it to Who says you can't taste it all without it telling on you? Miss Globe Light. Oh, yes, you can. Miss Globe Light. Oh, yes, you can. Make a load light. Super premium taste in a less filling beer. Make a load light. Oh, yes, you can. Have it all. They're wrapping uh, Bell's hand, Kenny Bell, the second string tailback. He had to replace the first string tailback, Troy Stratford, who has a bad hamstring. And now Tyrone Taylor, a third stringer from Bridgeport, Connecticut, a sophomore is in there. BC must play Penn State at Penn State next week, and with the possibility that their two top tailbacks will not play in that game. Unless they recover quickly this week. That's not going to help them. You're talking about that uh, feature they had at halftime about equipment and all those things. That's part of it right there, making sure you have tape and things for injured players. There's a flag down and going in, but we have a flag down. That's Strahan. They pulled everybody. Steve Strahan, the fullback, number 33. Everybody was running around. And we'll see what this is about. I think it's against Boston College. What well, was there? A hole there. He's. It fooled everybody because there was a hole. The league of use of hands, five-yard penalty on the offense. That's against Boston College. He'll put it back on the Rutgers 16 and make it first and 15 to go. The score is 28-20, Boston College, 431 to go in the third quarter. McNell sending out a play with the arm and hand signal. Flutie looks over to him. Now here's uh, Kenny Bell coming back in. And Scott Gieselman, the tight end, is back in. Gieselman's an outstanding blocker for a tight end. I'm sure that Flutie now, with that, that hand wrap, will think twice before throwing the football. Though. Now he's probably in there primarily as a running back. It's first down, 15 for the Eagles. On the 16-yard line of Rutgers. Rutgers has come back. And look what he does. Get it right to <laughs> Bell, the 15. Bell goes to the 10. We're just short of the 10. You're right, Coach. Well, he, they're he, not going to give it to him. He threw, he threw him a screen pass and hit him in the stomach so he didn't have to use his hands. Oh, was, boy, you, a, you slithered out of that <laughs> one. I I, mean, right. You know, yeah. He gets the old sidearm shot here. Watch. Downfield. You see the lineman going out to form the screen. Now 50-56 jumping up in the air, so he just throws it underneath him. Gets it to the back bell out there and picks up good yardage. Now it's now a second and 10 situation. It'll be second and nine to be exact. Six yard gain on that. Boston College in possession. Strahan the fullback up close. Bell is the tailback. They put Gieselman the tight end on the right side. And here is Bell. Bell's at the 10. And Bell goes to the 8. And that's about it, where Roy Oak ran into him. Roy Oak is an interesting story. He is from uh, in New Jersey, where the school is, is located, the Sackaway. He went to a junior college in Arizona, came back. Nobody knew anything about him, but they know something about him right now because he's having an outstanding game, like you had mentioned earlier. One interception for him. And a big hit right there. I was waiting for the proper time for you to announce the home team, hometown. <laughs> I wasn't going to take a shot at it. <laughs> Roy Oak, huh? He's been a player today, though, Lenny. Oh, yes, he is. The Scataway. The Very scat good. Excellent. Third down, seven to go. Bicknell is out, and Mark Gowetsky is in his center for Boston College. A third and seven play. Tyrone Taylor 
And Taylor's dad will be up there in the stand. You just saw him five minutes ago. That was a little basketball pitch back. That's right. And as the option play, he read that beautifully coming down the line of scrimmage. It got the ball out to Taylor. And Taylor has great speed. Here it is coming down the line of scrimmage. You see the offensive lineman, middle of all that. But here he comes. He sees the end zone. He is not going to be denied. All right, here it is. You can see it much better this way. Coming down the line of scrimmage. Flutie coming down. Wham, right now, you saw the linebacker coming after him. So he made a quick decision, got the ball out to Taylor. With his quickness and speed, got into the end zone. Well, that makes the score 34-20, Boston College. Kevin Snow for the extra point. And we still have almost three minutes remaining in the third quarter. He nails it. Boston College 35, Rutgers 20. We'll be back. I like small cars. We need more room. Today, Chevrolet has a car for you, the mid-size celebrity. Feel the room, ride in style, go in comfort every mile. Enjoy mid-size room with economy and a price that's surprisingly small. Celebrity. Lots of stuff here. If this is today's Chevrolet, I like it. And we need it. Drive today, Chevy. Live today, Chevy. Live it. Chevy. Little sharks, big sharks. Shoot it from the hip sharks. Night sharks, bright sharp. Boogie through the night sharp. There's an awful lot going on in video these days, and it's all going on at Sharp. Sheep Sharp, Sheep Sharp, anything you see, Sharp. Sharp Video. From Sharp Minds come Sharp Products. Boston College will kick off from your left. Rutgers receiving on the right. Well, it looks like Rutgers, a scrappy gang, hangs in there, and then... You see, about any time they want to move it, just takes it and goes right down and scores again. Well, they do it in in a hurry. You know, they have one big fly, pass play to uh, Martin. Bell. Yeah, Bell there, but Martin caught uh, a pass that got him in good field position. But uh, it was Bell, yeah, particularly running until he went out. Then Taylor came into. The, seems that they one guy leaves and another another person was in. It seems just as good. Kevin Snow's kick. Cooper has it. And he is being taken down. They got some good penetration that time yeah. by Neil Eiton, who plays defensive back. And also, Eiton is on the uh, kickoff team, and he was down there. He almost beat the ball down there. Yes, he did. He'd make a good tackle. Neil Eiton from East Orange, New Jersey. Rutgers ball on their 14, first down. It is now a 15-point lead for Boston College. Hochberg again to throw on the roll. Look out! Ho, ho, ho! Todd Russell nearly grabbed it, but when he uh, didn't do that, it almost went into the hands of Andrew Baker for a cinch touchdown. Yes, sir. That <laughs> I'm sure that Ru uh, Russell feels that he should have intercepted that football. I think Hochberg, had he waited just an instant longer before he released that football, Baker is going to be in the open. Second down 10 for the Scarlet Knights on their 14. They're putting Pendergrass to the right and Baker to the left. Now fake. They roll it out. There's the pass to Baker. He's got it. And he's out on the 24-yard line, taken out by Todd Russell, the left cornerback. Baker's been their best pass receiver today. That's the sixth pass he's caught in this game. He's got good hands. He's, he displayed that early in the football game, catching one that I can recall down around his ankles. They're going to measure for the first down at the Rutgers 24. got it first down Rutgers on their own 24 yard line Rutgers has moved the football in the second half every time they've gotten it it's their third possession I believe 
the other two possessions they scored. This wave really became popular out at Oakland the crazy George out there who was paid by the Oakland Baseball Club to lead the fans into some cheering and he came up with this wave idea now it swept the country especially since the playoffs in the World Series. That's the first time the West Coast has given the East Coast anything. I see. Right? <laughs> Crazy George was in Denver. He was in Kansas City. He's made a lot of trips. But they tell me he makes a quarter of a million dollars a year consoling teams. How crazy Chile. can he be, huh? Yeah, it's crazy <laughs> smart, George. Once again, a good first down play, picking up five yards. Second down. Just under five to go. Rutgers on their 30-yard line. Here is Albert Smith again. Smith, the top runner in the game out on the 36 and that's good enough for a first down once more for Rutgers. It's a good move by him too because he dipped to the inside then jumped to the outside to pick up the first down. Randy Hannes has gone in replacing Clement Udovich at left guard scores 17 10 now Penn goes up in front. First down Rutgers on their 36 yard line. They're trailing 35 20. That's Stevens. Stevens rolling and he has a first down. He brings it out to the 48 of Rutgers. Good block by Albert Smith the uh, the other back he got he really he leveled the outside man so he can do more than run with the football. Here is the the handoff right there you saw the screen that Albert Smith provided the key block that, that broke him open he got up to for the first down. We're under two minutes to play in the third quarter. Boston College in front, 35 to 20. Not much that time. Albert Smith stopped cold by the two linebackers, Von Neston Holy and Scott Harrington, the left tackle of BC. Close up of Dick Anderson. More scores coming up for you. Holy Cross 24, Brown 10. That's at halftime. To Carolina, South Carolina, unbeaten 21 10 over East Carolina. Best start ever for South Carolina. Army ahead of Syracuse, second quarter, 13 to 10. Second down nine, Rutgers just short of the 50 yard line. Now they're going to throw it. It's deflected and it's caught. It's caught on the 42 of BC. David Pereira deflected it and it's picked off by Dwayne Hooper. Well, that's a good break for Rutgers. That ball could have been caught by anybody. Rolling out to his left. Once again, he's having problems. That's the second one that's been deflected, but this time Hooper happened to be in the area, came up with a football. Now there's a problem there. You got too many people in the area. You got to spread that defense out. You notice that Flutie was throwing underneath people's arms and all this. And uh, hasn't had any of them deflected. Hochberg uh, came over top with that and had it batted back and almost in his face. It'll be second down and inches to go for Rutgers. Scott Drake at tight end. Pendergrass, a wide receiver out. That gives them two blocking tight ends. Hochberg now 17 for 38, 185 yards. He had a hot spell to open up. Then he went really cold. Now he's come back again. Yes. Playing much better in the second half than he did in the first half. Sometimes you get a little break like that and it really fires you up. Now they've been very successful in third and short situations. They're operating out of the eye and there is the first down pick up by Dwayne Hooper, number 43. John Bolger brought him down. Rutgers first down, Boston College is 40. 32 seconds remaining in the third quarter. They probably will get one more playoff if they run the football. Len Hochberg in the second half has completed seven out of ten. You just need to get a little, little bit of success to, to, you know, to help your confidence. This is the first down play with a slot right formation. Hooper outside picks up about three. Neil Eiton, the right cornerback, pushed him out of bounds. Clock stops. 16 seconds to go in the third period. Cooper's from Collinsville, Maryland. And a close up of Rusty Hochberg, State College, Pennsylvania. He's had a pretty good percentage coming into this game. He hit 55% of his passes. He's got a good arm. He's got a good arm. Just got to get the timing. Could he hit the receivers down a little better? Second down and eight for Rutgers. 
And that's Baker catching his seventh ball of the game. Andrew Baker of Trenton, New Jersey. Todd Russell right there on him. You notice going to the right, he fires that football. And there's no problem. But when he comes to the left is when he's having difficulties. That time, that was an excellent throw. Boy, that thing went out there in a hurry and got hit right on the numbers. Time has run out in the third quarter. The score is Boston College 35 and Rutgers 20. And we'll be back for the fourth quarter here at BC. One reason why Duracell batteries last so long is because we never stop improving them. In fact, today's Duracell batteries will last up to 20% longer than the ones we made just three years ago. And we'll keep on improving them. Because on that score, we have a one-track mind. Duracell, the copper top battery. When it comes to making them last longer, we never stop. Some of the guys in my carpool are real monsters. That's why I got a roomy Nissan Stanza. Plenty of trunk room for Willard's head. Plenty of headroom for Henry's trunk. And all the creature comforts. Hi, guys. He's strange looking, but with all this room, he fits right in. Come alive. Come and try. Major motion from Nissan. At your Datsun dealer. Over 10,000 doctors in Big Apple Country have joined Blue Cross and Blue Shield to offer our healthiest employee benefits plan ever. With a commitment to the future, our physicians will link their fee increases to the consumer price index, doing their share to help you control costs. All neatly wrapped and called Wraparound Plus. Call 1-800-554-PLUS to learn more about Wraparound Plus, the healthiest group benefits plan ever from Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Number 21, Tyrone Paris, Taylor Paris. Now, do you think that they weren't happy when he scored that touchdown? Uh, he's had a big day. His boy ran eight yards for a touchdown. Kurt Gowdy and Len Dawson into the fourth quarter. Rutgers, Smith over the 30, has a first down again. He's been the top ball carrier in the game. And Rutgers has had the top receiver in Andrew Baker, who has caught eight passes for 104 yards. Let's take a look at the total yards after three quarters. Might be a little surprising. Let's see. Rushing. Actually, Rutgers has outrushed him. Passing. BC has the edge. Total 343 to 390. Time of possession at third quarter. Rutgers had the ball 9 minutes 59 seconds. Boston College 5 minutes and 1 second. Almost twice as long. Rutgers first down on the BC 29. The pass out is complete and still there inside the 25 is Alan Andrews the tight end. He's starting to pile up some yeah. passing yardage and reception. It is. They had the blitz was on that time, and the guy that you got to stop is number 68, Ruth. Now you, he bench press. He's bench pressing <laughs> both of those guys. My goodness, no wonder you say he's so strong. He pushed both of them right back on their backs. But they had the blitz on that time, and Hockberg did a good job of getting the ball out to his big tight end right away. Rutgers on the BC 23 with a second down and four. Smith breaks it through the 15, still going, and is down to the 11-yard line. Albert Smith of Union, New Jersey. He can run. He led the team in rushing his freshman year, his sophomore year, and is way out in front. He's on his way to a thousand yard season this year. Good blocking up front. We just talked about uh, Mike Ruth doing a good job the play before. That time he was handled on the play and provided a big gaping hole there for the running back to get through. First down situation, almost to the 10 yard line. Good situation for Rutgers. Well, they moved that foot the football. In the they have. They're just pushing them back. They're dominating that line of scrimmage when they're running the football. Missed that 87 yards rushing. They give him the ball again. No place to go. No place to go that 
time. He's got a yard loss, and he was hit by Chuck Gorecki, the right end, and John Boza, the right tackle. That's the first time they pushed him back in quite some while. It'll make a second down, 11 to go, for a first down. For Rutgers, they're trailing 35-20. They still think they have a lot of time. Well, they do, but they've got to get a touchdown. 15 points down. I guess everybody understands that there is the two-point conversion rule in college football. But they've got to get into the end zone first. Bird may throw it. He's hit. Down he goes, and he threw another intentional grounding. While he was hit and going down, he threw the ball away. That is intentional grounding. It'll cost him the loss of a down. There'll be a penalty from the spot of the foul. And there's Anderson yelling out at him. Roy Norton, the right tackle, got to him for Boston College. You have to know when pressure is around, and apparently he didn't know it. But uh, the one's the difference between with him and Flutie. Flutie knows when there's pressure there. He feels it. You don't have to look at somebody, but you have to know it. He should have gotten rid of that there's football. There's no flag. There's no flag. Oh. Number 33 was in the area. It's an incomplete pass. <laughs> right. All right. Now they're saying that number 33 it's was Albert in Smith, the area. Yes. Albert Smith. College rule is different than the pro rule. In the pros, it is intense. Look at Big Mal. He's laughing at it. What do you have to do? He <laughs> doesn't look like he's smiling too much right now. Uh, in the pros, it's intensely grounding when you throw the ball away to prevent losing yardage. In the college game, as long as there's somebody in the area where you threw the ball, then it is not intensely grounding. And I guess Smith was standing right there by him, and he threw it right down to the ground. So the officials say oh. no intentional ground. He almost hit himself in the foot. I don't think Smith can be much closer than that. <laughs> well, while the crowd boos the decision, and Vic now goes wild across the way, we'll be back here with a score, BC 35, Rutgers 20. A lot of long-distance companies would like you to think they're just like AT&T. But take a closer look and see how different they really are. No operator service, no immediate credit for wrong numbers, and no service from many small towns. Only one long distance company gives you full service, only AT&T. Sometimes there's just no substitute for the real thing. AT&T, the more you hear, the better we sound. Reach out and touch someone. Some investment help. Has your here. company come up with a source for pensions? What's your company doing about group protection? In the complex world of business, the John Hancock companies can help in many ways with worldwide pension and profit sharing plans, group protection for the life and health of employees, with venture capital and other corporate financial services. I like their thinking. It's a very comprehensive Let program. us take the weight of the world off your business. John Hancock, we can help you here and now, not just hereafter. Kurt, you were talking about the differences in the rules between professional and collegiate, where in college ball, if somebody is in the area, then it is not intentionally grounding the ball. Hawkberg is rolling to his right, and he is going to be uh, grabbed right here. Bang. Now, he doesn't start to throw until he's already grabbed. Now, where is 33? Albert Smith. Where is he? <laughs> to me, he wasn't anywhere to be found. He didn't start to throw that ball until defensive man had him wrapped up. Third down and 12. Hochberg, pass complete to the five. He hits Andrew Baker, the flanker. They're short of a first down. Ed Von Nessen tackled him there, and Baker must have about nine catches today. Kurt, looking at that play, when looking, it looks to me like it was a gift for Rutgers. Because he def definitely was trying to get rid of the football. Fourth down, it's on the six-yard line. They have a fourth and four, and they're going to have Tom Angstadt try the field goal. He's kicked two today. This will be a 23-yard attempt, but chip shot is right up there, and he's got it. So that makes the score 35 to 23 in favor of Boston College. Chipping away, and I'm sure Rutgers feels the way they're moving that football offensively against Boston College that they, rather than take a chance for a touchdown at this stage of the game, they get the three points. 21-10 at halftime. 
So it's been a 14-13 game in the second half. Rutgers yep, played them about even. In fact, I think Rutgers has outplayed them. They have with the, well, bear in mind that opening kickoff was 93 yards to inside the five-yard line, and bang, Flutie got it into the end zone. So other than the, that one big play, yes, Rutgers has outplayed them. The Boston College team, Len, the defensive team, has been on that field a long yep. time in the second half. Ten minutes in the third quarter. Offensively, uh, for Rutgers as opposed to five minutes for Boston College. BC is going to be wary of an onside kick. Although it's a long ways to go. I think so. What they don't want to do is they don't want to kick it to Ken Bell. Next week, Cats Force will bring you a traditional rivalry of the East, a game between Pittsburgh and Syracuse. Len and I and the Cats crew will be at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse to see which team will get back into the win column. Pittsburgh and Syracuse next week over most of these same stations. Ken Bell and Tyrone Taylor are going to be deep for Boston College. And they still don't have this one racked up. No, by not by any shades. 35-23 Boston College. Every time they score, Rutgers hangs right in, comes back, keeps the ball away from the BC offense. Here's the scribbler. And it's gathered in at the 18, up to the 25. Going over the 30, up to the 36-yard line. The hit is made by Herndon Sims, and it was Kevin Sullivan who picked up the short one, number 37, again. One thing bad about those little squib kicks like that, when they get into the hands of somebody right away, they're going to get the ball back in excellent field position, which Boston College has right now on the 36-yard line. All right, here's Flutie up. It's been so long since he's been on the field, we forgot his stats. He hit 18 out of 25 passes in this game, 294 yards, three touchdowns, and he's rushed for a score. And he gives the ball off to Steve Strahan, the fullback, on their first carry. Puts it on the 38 of Boston College. Will make it second down and nine. 18 for Flutie today has moved ahead a notch in the all-time career passing. He's moved into fifth place all-time ahead of Joe Adams of Tennessee State. Yards. There's a Kenny Bell. Kenny Bell's up to the 43-yard line. Taken down by Tyrone Stoll, the linebacker, and Jack McCrary, the strong safety. All right, they're about two yards short of a first down, third and two. There's Hockberg, the Rutgers quarterback. I'm sure what Boston College would like to do now is keep the ball on the ground for a while, run off some of the time on the clock with 11 minutes remaining in this game. But first of all, they got to pick up this first down. Gieselman went out. Castorillo went in. Second string tied in. This is a third and two play. For the pass. He's going to scramble around. Look out. Look out. He throws it. It's complete. It's going to be a, a fumble. And BC may have recovered a diving on the ball. Or they may call it dead at the BC 41. They nearly got themselves into real trouble on that play. Well, they really did. And he tried to sidearm that thing or underhand the ball, falling backwards with no velocity on it whatsoever. And they're going to have to punt, and Rutgers will have a chance to come back again on a drive. It's fourth and six. Dan McHarris, the safety man. Remember in the first half, it returned 144 yards for a touchdown. A bunch of people up on the line of scrimmage, but they really aren't going. There's a nice kick, a hang time kick that time for Pete. Taken by McHarris on the 10. He's being pinned in. He gets away. Still going. Look at him. He's got away from three or four players before he goes down on the 16-yard line of Rutgers. It's a lot of running around, not really to get upfield very far. They could have had him inside the 10-yard line. Well, there's a timeout of the field with a score. Boston College 35, Rutgers 23. We'll be right back. This is the Cat Sports Network. Sunday at 3, it's blue collar. You can still help us get the case against the Union. It's murder now. He knows too much, and now they want him dead. I think they're following me. You don't care about nothing but your own dumb Polak. And at five, the gold rush is on. 
Now, there's only one thing of value in El Condor. I want her. Jim Brown and Lee Van Cleef in El Condor, a double feature Sunday on Channel 11. These Midwestern farmers believe in giving everyone a fair deal, and they expect one in return. They've always gotten along with the travelers on that score. And last year, we gave farmers like Tom and Harvey a deal that they thought was more than fair. The travelers offered them a customized farm and ranch policy that gave them better coverage for their money. Ask them if they think the travelers deals fairly. We're pretty sure they'd say, yep. At the travelers, we believe fairness is good business. Top receivers in the game. Andrew Baker of Rutgers has nine catches, 109 yards. Andrew, the tight end, is five for 63. Phelan has six catches for 96 yards for B.C. None in the second half, though. Rutgers ball on their own 15. Hawkberg bootlegging around. He's hit as he let it go, and it is complete. Yes, call it at the 27-yard wow. line Good to Baker. Catch by Baker. You were just mentioning him. He said nine. Now it's 10, and this is really an outstanding throw and a catch because... The blitz was on. Here it is, Baker, number 81, working on the defensive back, Russell, to the sidelines. Now, Russell's even overplaying it to the sideline, as you can see. But a good concentration, good catch by Baker. Baker now has 10 passes he's received in this game. Rutgers is on their 26. They don't go anywhere that time. Vern Williams stopped cold by John Boza and Chuck Karecki, the right side of the BC forward wall. Well, Rutgers has been able to run in the second half. This time, it's uh, the defense coming up to make the stop. Wham, right on the line of scrimmage. One, two, three. Three defensive people straightening him up, driving him backward. They have a second down nine. They're working against the clock. 9-12 to go, and they're 12 points behind. They just can't slog it down the field. They've got to score in some bunches here. That pass to Baker, too high for him. He was hanging up there. He was vulnerable, I'll tell you. Neil Eiton came right in under him. Baker nearly caught it, though. Yes, sir. I wouldn't surprise me anything that he catches out there today because he's made some really outstanding catches. Now, he's a good-looking receiver, isn't he, Lynn? Yes, he is. Tall. 13 to 7 in the fourth quarter, Wisconsin over Ohio State. That would be an upset. 24-13, now 10 over Yale. Holy Cross, third period, leading Brown, 24-10. This is a third down play and nine to go. Blitz is on. And flags are down, and the pass is complete to the 38-yard line to Boris Pendergrass, the split end. The two flags are down in the Rutgers backfield. <laughs> I think Dick Harris, Anderson knows what it's about. Anytime those flags are dropped back there, that's usually what it is. This will put the ball back on the 17-yard line at Rutgers and make it third down at 19. More scores coming up. Colgate 21, Columbia 10. Dartmouth and Cornell tie 10-all, third quarter. Harvard 14, Princeton 7, third quarter. South Carolina. 21-10 in the third quarter, trying to remain unbeaten. They're in the top 10. Now Syracuse has gone ahead of Army, 17-13. Oklahoma 3, Kansas nothing, second quarter. Hey, 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 Mississippi 14, Auburn nothing. Second quarter. Third down play, 19 to go, Rutgers. Hochberg throwing it deep, deep, and nearly caught by the tight end, but not quite. He moves very gracefully downfield on a deep pattern, Alan Andrews. Todd Russell was there, but he nearly had it. And now it's a fourth and 19 for Rutgers. It's first time they, first time they haven't been able to move the football in the second, uh, second half. Nebraska, Nebraska. Yeah. 19-7. They're winning, but not with those crushing scores. They scored in the 60s and 70s last year, averaging 42 points a game. Martin is the safety man for BC. Gary Liska is the punter. 8.49 to go in this game. High twisting spiral. Fair catch. Gets down on his own 48-yard line, Martin does. 
Boston's college ball first down. Jack McNell, he's a very good humored man. It's the maddest I've ever seen with the officials over there. We'll be back here again with the score 35 23, Boston College. Hey, can't you go to four wheel drive from inside? Not in this truck! Then get yourself into a Chevy S10 Blazer 4x4 and shift from freewheeling two wheel drive to four wheel high at any speed. No Ford can do that. I don't have to get out to lock the hubs. Chevy's Instatrack four wheel drive system lets you do it all from inside. So I can stay dry. Chevy, I like the way you work. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Down through the ages, mankind has had to endure many a rough road on the way to the Olympic Games and overcome many a hurdle, not the least of which was athlete's foot. Today, Mycotin makes that road easier because Mycotin cures athlete's foot. It's the only athlete's foot medicine you can buy with myconazole, a patented ingredient recommended by specialists to cure athlete's foot. Mycotin, the end of the road for athlete's foot. Let's update Doug Flutie now. Here are the all-time passing leaders in college football. Ben of the Duke, McMahon, BYU, Elway at Stanford, Herman at Purdue. Flutie moved up to fifth today. He has five more games left after today. In total career offense, Flutie is second. And he's now only uh, a couple hundred, a hundred, some 15, yards behind 15. Jim McMahon. He'll, he'll break that. Maybe next week. You look at field position for BC, second half they got it on Rutgers five their own 30 their own 29 their own 36 now on their own 48 great field position There's fumble. A fumble and uh, Rutgers has the ball Flutie fumbled the ball backing away from center and Rutgers would appear to have it let's see what they say yes sir big big break for Rutgers here it is Flutie Moving away, the exchange is not there between he and the center. He goes back after it, but Rutgers is there. They get the ball now in excellent field position, the best field position they've had all day. That's that Roy Oak again. He's intercepted a pass and recovered two fumbles. It's all over the place. It's a third turnover. Excellent player. Austin College turned it over three times. Rutgers on the BC 48. They're 12 points behind, eight and a half to play. Him at 52, Scott Harrington, the left tackle. A big sack for Boston College. That was a bad, bad move on that quarterback's part. He rolled right into the defensive lineman. He held on to the football that time. He didn't try to throw it, but here it is. Man is going out to block to the outside. Now he rolls right in. There he is, rolls right in to the defensive player. Instead of stepping up and throwing the football, if nobody's there, throw it away. He tries to get around him, and he just does not have that type of mobility to do that. Scott Harrington coming up with a big play for Boston College. Second down, 25 to go now for Rutgers. Try the draw play. Up to the 40. There's to the 42-yard line. And the hit is made by Peter Holy on Vernon Williams, number 38. That's why the you know, quarterback sometimes the play isn't there. Get rid of it. You know, come back. Now it's second and ten instead of a, a second and twenty or twenty-five situation. Well, they've got a third and twenty. This is their big play now. They've got to keep this ball and move on in. And they're twelve points down. Third and twenty. At least pick up some yards, or at least they can go for it on fourth down. down. There's the pass. It's intercepted by number 17, Tony Thurman. 30. He's at the 35. He's at the 40. That's his second interception. That's his ninth of the year. Big, big play, and I think probably what you're back in the backfield, I noticed that the defensive lineman, Mike Ruth, was tackled back there. Here it is, throwing it up for grabs, really. Thurman is going to be there coming up with his second interception of the day. As you can see him, he's following it all the way down the line. Comes up with it, crosses a field. Now he's looking for some help from some of his friends down there, but he doesn't get it. One, two, three, four. Rutgers defensive players in on the tackle. But BC has the football. 
Thurman has 22 interceptions in his career. The active career leader. There's an interception by Rutgers, and they come right back. That's 97, Jim Fakel, the outside linebacker. They're just What's changing going the ball on out back here? and forth now. What's going on here? Three plays, three turnovers in a row. Here it is, Flutie coming back, trying to fire the ball and, and drill it in there. But he's, one thing that you can't do, even though you have a strong arm, you can't try to force the ball in some place. The trouble is, once in a while, quarterbacks get away with it, and they try it. If you try it often enough, you're going to get burned. Well, Rutgers gained uh, ground on the <laughs> turnover. Four yards or something. <laughs> about four or five <laughs> yards. First down, Rutgers on their 49. They're trailing 35 to 23. Mike, Mike Ruth, Ooh, the yes. nose guard. He is the man on that interception that they tackled and held him. But Mike Ruth is having some kind of afternoon. Number 68, look at the arms on that young man. He just pushes that center out of the way, into the line, grabs the ball carrier, and down he's going to come. When he gets in, he gets you in his grasp, you're there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. He, Those guards are a different breed. I think you have to be to, to play over the center and get beat up by three people on so many plays. He intends to be a priest, by the way. Second down, 10. The pass is good to Baker. Baker taken off. Goes out of bounds. Stops the clock at the 41 of B.C. That is 11 catches for Andrew Baker today. What a day he is yeah. having in front of these Boston College fans, much to their dismay. You could see that he has extreme quickness and speed because uh, and size. He's big, tall. Look at him. Outran everybody and jumped to the outside to get out of bounds, which is really a, a, a good move. They're in a third down situation right now, but I, I look for him to run the football, pick up that first down, and they ought to call two plays right now. They ought to have two plays called. Third down situation, pick up the first down and just line up and go with the second play because they're going to move the chains once you pick up the first down. 6:09 to go in the game. Boston College 35, Rutgers 23. There goes Baker in motion. They do run it, and uh, first down for Dwayne Hooper, number 43. Stopped by Chuck Derecki. They stop the clock now on college ball and the first downs. But now, a little worried, aren't you, Coach? They stopped the clock, but see, they wouldn't have had any time runoff. They're still in the huddle right now. And they're, they're running that clock right now. The reason I said two plays because you they could have been on the line of scrimmage as soon as the referee winds his arm, bang, snap the football. Rutgers team has never given in in this game. Hockberg throws. He completes it to Baker again. Baker's at the 30, down to the 26. 12 catches for Andrew Baker. Coming across the middle, there are seams down there in the between linebackers. The quarterback can pick you up. Baker with his great quickness, and he's a good target, as you mentioned, so he's easy to spot down there. They're on the Boston College 26-yard line. Incidentally, Baker now is one away from tying the all-time uh, record record for passes caught in one game, held by Jack Emmer against Holy Cross back in 1966. He's got ground. He's moving it. He's moving it, Vernon Williams. They just pushing BC around right now. They've really dominated the second half, with the exception, I believe, one time uh, when they had to punt the football. They have moved the football on Boston College. That was a 12-yard gain. Rutgers first down. Boston College 14, 5:15 to play in this game. BC ahead by 12, but being threatened. Rutgers has outplayed them in the second half. They've had the ball most of the time. The one back offense, Williams, bangs to the 11-yard line of Boston College. Rutgers got to get moving now. They got to hurry up because they've got less than five minutes to go in this football game. Down by two touchdowns. Freshman of Romanowski. He's from Vernon, Connecticut. They're very high on him for BC, number 53. And Boza again. The yard line is the 11. It is second down and seven for Rutgers. On the BC 11 yard line. 35 23 Boston College. Baker in motion. The pitch goes to Hooper. Hooper slices off left tackle and reaches the seven or eight yard line. And he is stopped by Romanowski, the freshman again. Put it on the, oh, it's about the seven and a half yard line. 
They'll have a third down and three to go. Two tight ends, Alan Andrews, Scott Drake in for Rutgers. Third, there goes Baker in motion, 81. Diving over the five and uh, whistle had blown. He's on the four. I he did a complete flip. Want to be close? I think he's short, but well, our angle up here could be entirely different. Scott Harrington's a man that hit him low and spun him up in the air. Yeah, it looks like a gymnast out there. Number 43 is Hooper. He's going to go up, up above, right there. Wham! Ding! Here he comes. I don't know as if he ever went down. He, he right. I don't think he was, but he was stopped. That's probably why that they called the play back. Smith, there must be something wrong with him. Albert Smith, the uh, top runner in this game. He hasn't played in the last few plays. Hooper's replaced him and done a very capable job. They look to be short. They are inches short. They're on the BC four yard line. Fourth down and inches to go. They're trailing by 12 points with 350 to play in the game. And they're going to need two touchdowns yes. to win this game. They need to hurry up, too. Field goal they... won't do them any good. They've got to hurry this thing along more if they want to win it. Now the BC fans are yelling, hold that line. Hooper's a tailback. Williams a fullback up close. Baker going in motion. Hochberg barking the signals. Gives it to Hooper. Hooper drives him with a pair to have it. Again, he's trying to <laughs> scramble to get into the end zone. <laughs> it's a first and goal to go for Rutgers. He's getting pretty, I'll tell you, he's getting pretty good at this. Now, that's the second time in a row. Just to prove that the first one was not a fluke, he's going to do it for you one more time. <laughs> Here it is up. Another little old tumble over there, right there. That's up the doodle, and away we go. <laughs> three and a half minutes to play. First and goal to go, Rutgers on the Boston College three. And now they're going to call a time. Hochberg comes in and uh, mixed up with the line, asks for time. They'll have two timeouts left. So we're going to leave you for a minute. Be back. It's Boston College 35, Rutgers 23, and Rutgers right on the goal line. Hold. Can anyone here name a copier maker that's bigger than Rico? Xerox. Rico's bigger. IBM? Rico's bigger. And we got to be bigger than Xerox by making a full line of copiers that win top marks for quality, like this Ricoh 6080 console copier. What a revelation. Now, are you still overlooking Ricoh and the Ricoh 6080? Call Ricoh. We respond. This fall on Cat Sports, powerful Eastern Independents square off in a battle for supremacy. The high-flying Boston College Eagles, the Pittsburgh Panthers, and the Orange Men of Syracuse face the finest in national and regional competition. The action's furious, the rivalry's intense, it's Eastern football at its best. The situation, 3.22 to play in the game. Alumni Stadium on the campus of Boston College. Rutgers is on the Boston College three-yard line with a first and goal. And they're trailing 35 to 23. Hochberg on a rollout. Shoots it, deflected away. Deflected, I think, by 30, uh, by Romanowski. Got his hand up there, the freshman, intended for Dwayne Hooper. That type of play, if you're not going to get the ball out to somebody right now, they're not going to be open. The best thing to do is get rid of it and come back on second down. It was a good time to throw the football, though, a first down situation inside the five-yard line. I notice up on the scoreboard that they're asking people to make a lot of noise. The reason being, if they do that, then Rutgers cannot check off because the wide receivers will not be able to hear. Second down, three to go, Rutgers touchdown. That man in motion has set an all-time record here today, we'll tell you about. And that's Hooper trying to fight for the goal line, can't make it. Andrew Baker with 12 catches and 119 yards. 119 receptions. Career is the all-time career leader. There's Hooper coming back to the huddle. 12 of them today, one away from tying the single game record for most Rutgers really wasting a lot of time, my goodness. 
You know, they should have those. They should be four in that timeout. They should have had three or four plays called, depending on what was going to happen. First pass wasn't completed. Have that one ready if that doesn't get into the end zone, because they are fighting the clock. Now uh, the officials come in and stop the clock. The BC player trots to the sideline. BC called timeout. BC called timeout. Well, you don't want to make a mistake down there if you're Boston College right now when the, they're inside the, the five yard line. Chuck Gorecki, the right in, went to talk to the coaching staff. We'll be back again. The score 35 23 BC. Travel arrangements made through Eastern Airlines. This year, come fly away to the beautiful beaches of Florida or the Caribbean with Eastern, the new leader in service to all the Americas. For you uh, Rutgers fans, Baker's 12 catches today gives him 119 in his Rutgers career. That's a new record. The old record was 112 receptions by Tim O'Dell at Rutgers in 1977 through 1980. He was open a couple of other times, too, in the ball game that had been able to get him the football. He would have broken that record. A lot of credit should be given this man, Dick yes, Anderson. Sir. He came in here with a fighting ball club today. Well, I'll tell you, see what they have done. It looked like that they were knocked out when they started the second half. 93-yard uh, kickoff return. Got it into the end zone right away, but they did not quit. Total yards so far, Rutgers get this, 420. Boston College, 395. We have a third down and two now for a Rutgers touchdown. They have a full house. They keep the ball, they throw it, and it is no good. They try to get it to the tight end, Allen Andrews, 86. And he was out there just a little bit over him. And a terrific job of getting rid of the football because from the outside, here it is. He's going dragging out right now. He attracts the attention of two defensive backs. He does have a step, but it was just a little overthrown. The reason for that was is because no one blocked the outside man and bearing down on Hawkberg, and he had to get rid of the football. You want to know why this game is running late? That's the 50th pass thrown by Hawkberg in the game. 50 passes. Rutgers has used today. Fourth and two for the touchdown. Rutgers last shot. The pass is caught, I believe. No, oh. let's see. No, I guess not. He. What is it down there? Well, Tony Thurman has the ball right now. I don't know how he got a hold of it. Somebody looked like they had it down there. They ran yeah. about three or four of them together. You couldn't tell. To be a discussion. It looked like that number 86. I thought Alan Andrews might have had the football. Another board meeting. <laughs> Here it is, rolling out to his right, which is a good move on their part because he's had some difficulty going to his left and throwing the football, but it's up in the air. I don't know. It's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. It's going to be blocked in Cosmos ball. It's now ruled an incomplete pass. Pass. Here it is. 86 is Andrews coming out, getting into the uh, to the end zone. He gets his hands on the ball and it's jarred loose. Number 41. 41 Pereira. helmet knocks it out. Pereira, he had it going down. Would have been a Rutgers touchdown, but evidently the helmet of Pereira smacked the ball loose. And Boston College will take over on his two-yard line. And they've had all they've wanted in this second half. They had. Their defense has been on the field consistently in the third and fourth quarters. The offense has had very little to show. They ran the opening kickoff of the second half back 93 yards, and then Flutie scooted in for a touchdown. Outside of that, the Rutgers ball game. Here's Flutie coming out of the end zone. Goes on the run. To Phelan, he dropped the ball. How about that? With a minute, uh, two minutes, 16 to go, throwing, rolling out of the end zone and throwing well, the ball. Well, that shows you how much confidence he has in his ability because if he didn't throw the football, he knows he has the ability to put it under his arm and run. That's one big difference between he and Hockberg. Hockberg does not have that type of mobility. If he's rolling out, he's got to throw the football. But here you got Flutie rolling out there, and he's looking. He had a man deep. If he was open, I know he's going to throw there, but he did have Palin open, throwing the football, and it was not caught. a little breathing room there. We'll do it again. 
pass. Got him. Got him. It's Martin. Martin at the nearly shook away. Goes out to the 16. Steve Twomley tackled him. Martin thought if he did the pivot, he might have gone all the way. That's right. why he was. Ah, oh, mad at myself. I should have got away. There you see the difference, you know, in quarterbacks. Somebody who has a great deal of confidence in his ability. Here it is throwing a sideline pattern right now out of his end zone. First time he threw the ball, he threw it back in the middle. He hit his man. He didn't catch it. The second time he put the ball on the money. Now they got some breathing room, and I would I would think right now that he give it, hand it off to his backs and try to run this clock off and end the game. Yeah, we're down to a minute 50 to go in this game. He does give it to his running back, Steve Strahan, the fullback. Look at here. Look who has the football. There's a flag down. There's Roy Oak, Oak again yeah. coming up with it. I'll tell you one thing about Rutgers. Did you see the hitting that's going on right now? Here it is. Foul. Personal foul on the tackle. First foul on the tackle after the ball was dead. The officials didn't like what happened after that. But initially, the initial hit on the ball carrier was was a very sharp hit, which shows that this this man is doing a good job of coaching Dick Anderson of this Rutgers football team because, as you mentioned before, they have never given up. Dead ball foul, personal foul, 15 yards on the defense, first down. Now Boston College has the ball on their 33-yard line. They did have it on their two-yard line. Minute 40 to go in the game. BC leading 35-23. They were just nearly scored on and still over two minutes to play then. That's Strahan, the fullback to the 35. Two-yard gain. Second down eight. Syracuse has two timeouts. I mean, uh, Rutgers has two timeouts left. We'll be doing the Syracuse game. I was about to read that next week, Pittsburgh. We have a timeout down there. The executive producer is Fred Botmanek. Game is produced by Jim Silman. Directed by Billy McCoy. Associate director, John Calabrese. The associate producer is Eric Eisendrath. Stage manager is Rose Anderson. Broadcast associate, Mark Brown. Technical director, Dave Mazza, and the audio has been done by Bob Dixon. BC will have the ball on their 35-yard line, leading by 12 points with a minute 25 to go. BC led at halftime, 21-10. I guess the big play of this game was the reception of the second half kickoff. Kenny Bell ran it back 93 yards. The next play, the first play from scrimmage of the second half, Doug Flutie scored. He's thrown three touchdown passes today and scored once. And outside of that, Rutgers was the dominant team. Flutie's quick one is complete to Kenny Bell. And Bell's out to the 49-yard line. Flutie ought to be over 300 yards in passing. Another penalty. There's another hitting flag late. drop. Hitting late. We'll figure Flutie out for you. Rutgers would love to figure him out. He has uh, he hasn't had one of those spectacular Flutie days, but he's had a very solid one. Anytime over 300 yards, he's passed for 318 yards. He has attempted uh, 30 passes, completed 21, and he scored a touchdown. Dead ball foul, personal foul, late hit on the defense, first down. First down, B.C. and the Rutgers 36 just a moment ago. Boston College had the ball on their own two-yard line. A little over a minute to play. Tight ends moving over. They'll probably pitch it out to the right side. They did. That's Kenny Bell slicing back. Bell is to the 32, 31-yard line of Rutgers. 56 seconds to go. Now we got another, another flag, flag down. Yeah. Let's see what this is for. It's called retaliation. Wide receiver for Boston College took exception to the late hit that the Rutgers defensive back uh, made on the play before, so they were wrestling away down in the secondary. It's a dead ball foul, a personal foul against the offense. It's going to be second down. There you go. Well, back they go. <laughs> it's like last week in Miami, we had second down. 
for how many plays? Four or five plays. Five in a row, <laughs> five penalties in a row. I don't believe I've ever seen so many late hit penalties in a game. Well, the frustrations are coming out right now. Next week, Cat Sports will bring you the Pittsburgh Syracuse game from the Carrier Dome. See which one of those clubs gets back in the win column. Pittsburgh and Syracuse next week over most of these same stations. We're down to 45 seconds now in this game. Booty taking his time. He's got a 12 point lead. All he has to do is run a sweep, you know, and end this thing. There it is. Here's Kenny Bell. Stay in bounds. Cuts back. Bell twists to the 38 yard line. That'll We're do down it. to 25 seconds now. That will do it. It's been a hard fought game for, for Rutgers. They've done a really a fine job. And the thing that they did. They stayed in there and battled all the way down the line. Looked like at one point early in the second half they were going to be knocked out of it, but they came back and made a good football game. Of it. They really did. Boston College now goes to its fifth win of the year against one loss. Remember, they had three weeks off. They'll be playing tough Penn State at Penn State next week. We'll be back with a final word on today's game in just a moment. This is the Cat Sports Network.